All right, welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Karen Tina JB with me. Yo. Yo. Yes, sir. Good Perry in the building. Almost said a word. <laughs> I can't say. You know what's crazy? <laughs> they hit me with an email recently and told me I was not allowed to call myself Ooh. on my camera. Please. <laughs> so, so it's just crazy. They told me I wasn't even allowed to call myself that on camera. Very weird. You can call yourself Blurberry, Perry. Blur. Blueberry. Or Blueberry. Blueberry. <laughs> Blueberry. I'm going to call him Blueberry. Uh, yeah. But they told me not to call myself that on camera. Or like, stop putting it in like, tweeting or stuff like that. You know what's fucked up, man? Because Gucci's got the endorsement now. Yeah, but the thing is, Gucci was all, always like, I remember when, when, uh, you know what's cr- I'm not even gonna say it, but there's a place that's nearby that I that I record at, uh, that I used to record at or be at all the time. But um, <clears throat> right. So Gucci always was fighting a lawsuit. I never had money like <laughs> like when Gucci's had money oh, forever. Okay. Oh, he was when Gucci. when Murray first hit me, I had no money to fight in a lawsuit oh, okay, or do anything with them or like whatnot. So I was like, fuck it, y'all can have the name. Like mm-hmm. I don't even care. Like mm-hmm. as long as me just being Perry, like. That's all that matters. Oh, okay, I didn't yeah. understand that first. But that's how Gucci was able, and then somehow he got on good terms. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that too. Mm. Hopefully. Just start fighting, man. Because sometimes I'll talk back and <laughs> forth. Sometimes I'll message the lawyer and be like, hey, what's up? What y'all doing? Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hit me back, man. Just go have a meeting with them. <laughs> fight right. the good fight. <laughs> oh, God. Right. But yeah, we, we got a lot to talk, you about, talk to you about today. We definitely want to get into... Just your come up story and how you got to where you are today. I know you're big on being an artist now. You release music. We want to talk about some of the things that you've learned, you know, about the business, some of the mistakes you've made that you can, you know, kind of shed and drop to the community. But we were just talking about something really dope for the audience. You know what I mean? Mm. Right before we got started. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hold on, shit, we, we got to just start the <laughs> podcast. So let's get back into that conversation. And the conversation started with you kind of just saying how the mentality of people are looking, producers, artists are in that, I need to flip, I need to make money today mm-hmm. mentality, yeah. not really worrying about the Long longevity. Term. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, damn, I forgot the quote that I was saying. I, I literally came out with that. Time is money. Oh, yeah. so, I, so in my sense of, I feel like today's times, today's everything, they've, um, everybody's in such a flipping mentality, they forget to worry about themselves on a long term. And I feel like when you flip, you flip, you flip. Like, um, you completely forget. You live so much in the moment. You forget to live for yourself in the future as well. And that producers have a very good way of getting to that mentality because we've already, like, we're already waiting for everything. We're already waiting for, like, payments, papers, um, people to get on songs, people to drop songs, people right. who told us, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. We already wait for everything because our life is already switched to long term. So, like, it kind of teaches you that... Um, Okay, so when I say time is money, my definition is money buys you time to do what you want in the meantime until you can you need more money. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what time is money is to me. So, Perfect. yeah. And that's how I came to that conclusion. And now I'm about to go into full philosopher mode. <laughs> because, <laughs> this is where we cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So, like, I have a belief that, like, okay, so there's two things. Like, I believe that life teaches everybody the same lessons, just at different times. Mm. 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 And I also am like a, like I also think that people come to, the only thing as a producer, as any kind of artist or any kind of person making anything, Mm. the only thing between you and your idea is reality. And how you choose to traverse that reality to bring your idea or art to life. You know what I'm saying? You have to deal mm-hmm. with the cards that are dealt to you. Like, uh, you have to learn to deal with them. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's a part of life as you growing mm-hmm. as a person and as an artist in order to be able to... Because nobody wakes up... You didn't wake up today and was like, damn, I want to be more ass than I was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nobody wakes up like that. Right? <laughs> Nobody's like, damn, I want to... Like, I wish I was worse than I was. You want to wake up, like, better than you were the day before, right? Right. So I feel like... <laughs> When people get into the flipping state of mind, like they get into that really short term, like it messes them up mentally because then then you adopt that as a long term lifestyle. The and then you start room. to get frustrated with things. And then you're like, why the fuck is this? When you come to a wall, like you're like, Thanks. how the fuck do I want to call this? How do I maneuver through this? Who do I talk to? Like, how can I this? And I feel like 
as a producer, producers are much more tailored and are philosophers as well when it comes to like that side of life and entrepreneurship, putting your art out and dealing with your life and the cards that are dealt to you and figuring out how to make that work best for everything going on down the road for yourself as well. But I don't even know what point I just covered at the end of that. So right, you're right. saying... I, mean, that, <laughs> I yeah. covered some point. Yeah, you, so you're saying that producers are good at that? Yes. Producers are extremely good at that. Versus Our, artists? All the ones I've met. Do you know who um, Mitch Moolah is? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Bro. to Mitch Moolah. Well, actually most producers. I'm, but he was like the first one I've seen because I've never been a very organized person. So he was like one of the first person that he pulled out of his laptop, like already got everything set up, like in the little presets. Everything's already in a track out. I mean, in a in a track. Um, I already got instruments like the the set of drums and I'm like damn I really need to do shit cause like that's like one of the learning things that like a lot of people like you learn that you have to make shit more convenient for yourself in order for you to like progress Enjoy or you it. should learn you literally have to right like, and as like as as a producer even now uh, with more hmm, in my case I don't know cause I don't really look competition as competition because like Creative wait how play. do y'all think of it like as but competition as a producer what do you guys think of like producer competition is there producer competition to you guys maybe like competition to get on these albums and get these placements but but then again it's like rappers fuck with who they fuck with so it's kind of what do you think what do you think i feel like rappers rappers definitely rappers definitely fuck with who they fuck with but it's a hustle yeah. you know what i'm saying like if somebody can get to the studio before you and talk to the engineer and put in that move before you then mm. that's that's what you're racing against mm. and mm. You, you can have you can have better beats than the next producer but the race is the hustle but then there's you talk also, to the people and get your beats there but then there's the competition I think in the music part is like mm. I want mine to hit I want my beats to hit harder than anybody mm. so I think there's a competition in the creative spot too yeah but, yeah but like I just said I'm 90% sure you've made a beat and you've compared it to a beat that you heard on the radio and been like, bro, I made that beat before. Or like, my like mind's hard. I could, yeah, like, I made that beat a year ago, some shit. But you some know what I'm saying? Be like, that's, that satisfies them. Yeah. Be like, nobody's got to hear this, but I know this. It's, it's a time and place, though. But what he's got me thinking is, is it real, is it real cold, hard competition. business competition is, the same way like, like Chick fil A even... versus KFC? Like, if Chick fil A sells more chicken sandwiches, that means KFC, KFC selling less. Like, is there a producer you actively like, like, damn, like, or is there anywhere you go, is there places that you go that you feel like, damn, I got to show out and like be better at this point? Like, is there any point? Or anywhere yeah. that you go, that I mean, that? yeah, like yeah, in, yeah. in a sense of in the sense of like playing beats for a beat battle, or mm. and we're and we're, we're collabing in. Yeah, but like that's you, beat battles aren't really like that's more of like a competition atmosphere versus right, like right, right. like okay. industry. That is true, but industry playing competition. Beats not for, like playing beats for an artist is not a competition. But it's not okay, like the no, artist no. in the no. studio, like yo, I need you to play a beat. You <laughs> whoever's got the hardest beat, I'm getting in the studio right now. I don't think it's really like that. Yeah, it's, yeah but it's like a, it's an unspoken. No. It could be like an unspoken competition. Like if two of us are playing beats, like whoever got the harder beat, like. But check check this out. So industry wise, no, because it's a time and place for everything. Like. Hmm. Think about it on a more realistic level, like how you just said that um, money is buying you time. Um, there might be a producer who has money that enables him to be mm. in another state during mm. this conference, and he's out there, and that's why he's getting this placement with this artist that's also out there, because he has the budget. Mm. And that's why it wouldn't be a competition at that point. It'd be like, okay, like I didn't went and hustled this up so I can go be over here and you can't be over here right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a time and place because you get your beats there. You might have had beats 10 times better than his, but mm. can't mm. be his hustle. I understand that. I can understand that. Hmm. It's crazy because I don't really think about... Well, I guess this goes back to like my, my like come up or whatever you would say. Mm. So for me, when I started making beats, like, that's when everything started coming <laughs> together. Like, so like, I never went through that trivial, like, like, I feel like producers go through some years before they ever like actually get the shine or any money or recognition that they actually like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Right. For me, like, I feel like I was, I was lucky in the sense of like, cause I remember I started producing in 2016 
And then that's when, like, wait, what? Yeah, you started making beats in, in 2016? 2016. Yeah, what? The hell? And that's I when your shit so, came out, right? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've always done stuff by how I feel, like in the moment. Because I feel like mm. if I do stuff by how I feel, I'll always be the most me at any time, any point, anywhere. Right. And like, if I'm doing that, then I should always be happy. <sighs> philosopher mode again but <laughs> i i find that the more you focus on who you are when people aren't there and the less on who you are when people are you find life to be a lot better you, you're gonna get one side of producers coming at you saying like, <laughs> yo what like this guy you know he doesn't even make beats you know what I'm saying? i do like, he just, uh, but here's the thing okay so yeah. okay i started i don't consider this beat making because before that I used to do this thing called Audio Tool. I don't know if it's still online. But it's like, it literally, you take like a bunch of like already made loops and whatnot, and you just put it together on a website, and it automatically puts all the BPMs and whatnot, has them all on the side, and you just literally just put them together. So I don't, I don't consider that a form of producing now. Right. So I wouldn't consider me a producer back then, because I was just, that's kind of like just fumbling with sounds. Too. Right. So, yeah, I didn't really start producing until... 2015, 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long were you making beats before you like had people rapping over your shit? Not long. It it was more of like a... So for you, it wasn't like a, yo, I'm making beats and this is like, this is a dream. It was more like, this is my lifestyle. Like, I started making beats just because like, this was going around, this mm -hmm. was going on around me. It was like, well, so... No. That's what we're trying um, to figure out. Oh, okay. So then let's get to the beginning. So my my most of my life I grew up very sheltered. My parents are from Haiti. Mm -hmm. So like okay. they wouldn't let me go outside. I didn't listen to music. I listened to Shania Twain. Like one Shania Twain album my entire life. <laughs> and and Haitian That's music. As fuck. She's yeah. like a country singer. Yeah, yeah, she's so fire though. She's extremely fire. But I listened to one Shania Twain album my entire life and Haitian music. Other than that. So one day, I remember uh, I used to live in New York, like way far upstate. Um, what part? Rochester. Oh, Get the fuck out of here. My That's where I'm gosh. from. Bro. Rochester. That's crazy. Yeah, hey. what the <laughs> That's crazy. She's from Rochester too. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why I'm what from way upstate. Hell? Yo, Rochester. Crazy, but, How long? Yeah. When did you move out of Rochester? Uh, when I was like seven. When I was like seven. But That's crazy, bro. I remember. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Bro. <laughs> but I remember like. I remember, like, the first time I ever heard a different song other than Shania Twain or Haitian music. Because before in my life, I remember there was a point in my life where I never used to bob my head. I used to just snap, like, to beat, to the beat. Like, I literally, you would <laughs> catch me in the back, music. like, doing this shit. <laughs> like, literally this. What and the? then I remember I heard, the first song I ever heard was a Kanye West song. It was wow. Gone by mm -hmm. Kanye West. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I remember I heard that, and it was like, yo, people are like, putting this together like this, like, like how, like, other than that, all I ever heard was like game soundtracks and movie soundtracks and whatnot. But I didn't really listen to music. I was very cut off. Like to this day, people are still putting me on like, I never heard a Sade song. I've never mm. heard like a Biggie song. I've never heard any old music. Like, yeah. Yeah. so, um, yeah. So like, I feel like that interaction of me like discovering like, oh shit, like when I first heard that Kanye song and I was like, people are putting this together. Like, like this sounds like Man. such a a symphony. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And so that's what first sparked my interest into making music or producing. Cause I was like, cause like for me, even now, I don't listen to music. I don't like to listen to music. I like like silent car rides. I like like talking. <laughs> but I Man. I don't like listening to music. My favorite part about music is you ever have like a specific part of a song that's just your favorite part of the song. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that part and I'll loop it for hours and just listen to it all day. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like music is Why, a drug. Bro? Like that's the best part. Like it's, Why, like, it's like, fuck, <laughs> like this is the best part. I'm not like, gonna lie, like, I've done that before. Like, no. just play the half part of the song over and over. <laughs> like, <Why> yeah. <laughs> so like, I re like, like that's like when people say music is a drug, that's the drug of it for me. Like, I'm mm, like, fuck, man, just like, shooting up for hours. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, fuck, like this part, <laughs> no, like, no, this no. specific <laughs> bass transition going into this and then specifically the melody comes in. Like, oh, Oh shit. Nah, I know what like, you're talking about though. It's all the crazy shit. So Thanks. like that's what I like. And uh, um so like which is crazy. I don't know how to explain 
like where I get my sense of any musicalness. Mm-hmm. I don't know, even listening to it now, like I don't know or know how to explain it. All I know is just, just how I feel. Mm. Right. <laughs> and that's the only thing I can explain. But back to the part of me coming up and producing. Okay. So I heard the Kanye West song, and that's what first tipped me. But I was still in like... And what year was that? What year was that? I can't even remember, because I was living... I was like... Yeah, I'm like a little it was after I left New York and then came here. Because I remember I was outside when I heard it. I was like, swear. And then... But I think I, it was... I went to Jackson Elementary, then went to... So you were a kid or old? No, middle? I was I was in middle school. Oh, yeah, okay, I was in middle okay. school. I was in middle school, yeah. That's crazy to think now that I was in middle school first hearing hip-hop. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, I was in middle school. And then... Um, and then in middle school, I kind of left it alone. Then I came to high school. Or, or in middle school, I always... Uh, in middle school, I started sneaking and listening to music. I'll, I'll, I didn't leave it alone. I started sneaking and listening to music, like... <laughs> Let's call it like behind my parents' back. Cause like my parents, well, at that point it was just my mom. But my mom like believes that like all like hip hop music is like bad music or any other <laughs> kind of music is like yeah. all bad music. So she would never let mm. me listen to it. And I never had like MV3 or internet. I didn't have internet until I was grown, which is crazy enough. Mm. But um Yeah. Read a book to you, right? Just read a book. <sighs> Bro, I didn't even read books. I used to like make code name kids next door guns in like <laughs> small cities and like and like smart cardboard cities and like put my toys in and just burn Honestly, it all down. Bro, that's probably like the biggest blessing though because remember how Charlie was talking about imagination? Yeah. Like you had nothing, you had yeah. to be forced to use Dude, your imagination. Man, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Damn, that's crazy. I feel yeah. that. So I like used to make like little small cardboard cities like and the crazy part is like I would go into detail like cut out doors so that my toys can walk through and shit. <laughs> and <my laughs> He's like, oh, I think two laps would be nice. Oh right God. <laughs> oh God. I used to make them like on my little back por- uh, patio and then I used to burn them and I used to piss my mom off so much but I still like, <laughs> but um, yeah. And then when I came to high school I met uh, like other people who produced and whatnot but there was a specific friend of mine named Greg who I, I came close with. And he always, and he wanted to do something in music. And at this point, I didn't know what being a producer was called. So he was like, I want to go to school for audio engineering. I was like, that sounds about right. Like, that sounds like what producing is, right? So I was like, yeah, that's what I want to go to school for too. So I used to piggyback off of his like idea of whatever producing was because I didn't know what it was. And then finally, when I got to like 12th grade and it was ready to go off to college, I was like, I mean, and it was ready to go off to wherever. Because like, that's when I, when I got to 12th grade, and then a the year after, I got kicked out because my mom was like, you either go to the military or, or like, get, <laughs> or get out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I left at that point. And then that's when I, I was going to college at the same time, too. I was going to Georgia Perimeter. Mm. Oh. Which um, is regular, regular yeah, college okay. type shit. Yeah. But I was going to college. Oh, it's the other thing now. I also wanted to be, when I was younger, I always wanted to be an aerospace engineer. Mm. So I went to school for aerospace. My engineer. old elementary is aerospace engineer. Oh, now. oh, that's fine. Right. That's fine. But I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. And um, yeah, so I went to school to be an aer- aerospace engineer. And I was living out of my car at the time. And at Nestle's house, like a little bit. Was that Nestle's house at this point? No, that was Brett's house. Shout out to Brett. That's my friend Brett. Like I had a bunch of friends who took care of me, like, which I'm very thankful for as well. Like I had mm. friends who gravitated to me and took care of me before, like, I don't know whether they saw potential in me or anything, but I had friends who like always looked out for me. So shout out to Nestle, Brett, Yachty. Um, But yeah, I was living in my car and like working with Nestle. Like this is, I met Nestle at GPC in college. And then through Nestle, me and him hanging out, I came to meet the I feel like in this point, like 2015, 2016, like I would say this is like the clout era of like mm-hmm. whatever yeah. was going on. So like we used to go to this party called House of Lotus. Mm-hmm. And this is where everybody used to hang out. It was uh, me, Nestle, Cardi, Trippy, um, Yachty, Uno, uh, Fani. Uh, I remember one time I saw Soldier Boy out there. Uh, what's it called? Like it's, it was, it's just a little house party that's over like in the hood somewhere. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but like we all used to go to this party and that's how I initially met Yachty um, through like so yes by going to this party with Nestle I met Yachty 
And you were making beats this time? I was making beats at this time. Yeah. But the crazy part is Nestle, or nobody wanted to hop on my beats at the time. I mm-hmm. guess it was because it was so off-putting, maybe, or maybe it was not what people wanted at the time. And then I met Yachty. And then one time Yachty came over to Nestle's house to record. And he was like, what the fuck? He was like, so are you making this? I was like, yeah. And he was like, yo, can I have these? And I was like, sure, whatever. Fuck, fuck it. So then, like, that was literally the first year I started producing, 2015. Mm. And then that was the year I met Yachty. And then after that, like, I don't know. We just became friends, like close friends. Like, like he became one of those people who took care of me as, like, time went on. Well, we kind of took care of each other because we got kicked out of his mom's house oh, once or twice. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, so we, ca- we came to this. I met Yachty. I made the beat. I forgot what, what it was called back. Uh, is it called The Runaround? It's, it might be called The Runaround. It was Yachty, Nestle, and j Bands or something like that. And it was them three. And then after that, Yachty would always hit me and be like, yo, bro, I want beat. Like, can you please send me beat? And I'll be like, sure. I'll be like, nobody else is asking me for them shit, so I might as well just send them to you. So. Crazy part is, this is when I can remember everything going. I remember 2015 on his birthday, I sent him the beat to uh, one night, mm-hmm. and I I called. I originally called it Beach Beat or something like that, and I sent it to him, and he sent it back to me, and I was like, hmm, this is kind of off putting, but I kind of like it because it's like, like I feel like at that point we were basing, or everybody in general was kind of basing everything, all their stuff off their feelings. And, like, we're just kind of maneuvering through time. Like, we're just, like, figuring it out. So, mm. yeah, I sent him that beat. And then after that, we, like, it was, like, some months later. And he he hit me. He was like, yo, did you know one night it's going on? I said, it is? He was like, yeah. I was like, we're trying to figure out where the fuck it's coming from, why it's, like, getting hella plays. Who's called, this on SoundCloud? Yeah, it was on SoundCloud. That's yeah. it. Mm. It was on his his uh, project called Summer Song 2. But, which is the crazy part. because. I wouldn't even, the biggest things in my life always come from the places I least expected it. Mm. Like, always. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I remember that came up. And then we were trying to figure out, and then we found out it was from that Kaleon Fox dude. And then that's what the like, vine? Was, yeah, the Vine, or I don't know if it was a Vine. It was a little funny I video. Was a vine. Yeah. I think it was a Vine. Yeah. And then that's how the song was going up. And then from there, I don't know, I will just, I always been doing stuff how I feel and like, Making music from my mm. bubble, bubble, my bubble. I say everybody has a bubble. So, th- so this was like a throwaway. You no, you it wasn't like, even a throwaway. Like I was just because he was the only person I was like who ever asked me for beats. So it wasn't like even throwaways. He would like ask me, "Yo, can you make me a beat?" And I'd be like, "Okay, sure." And yeah. I'd just make the beat and send it to him. Mm. So. You said you said like everybody was making beats off of how they feel, and you like a at that time you said that everybody was making beats off of how they feel. You feel everybody like, was making everything off how they art, music. <clears throat> you mean in the industry, beats. or just the people you were around? You just do. the people we was around. Maybe it's just because my bubble was so small at the time. It's mm-hmm. only it, is, it was the only things I could see. Do you so, think it's still right. like that now, or do you think like what do you think it is now? Do you mm-hmm. think it's more like kind of like strategic? Like I'm just gonna make this because I want to make money. Or like, yeah, I still think people do think a little bit too strategic about. It. Well, to this day. I don't know. I don't know what it is, or whether it's in an un- industrialization of hip hop mm-hmm. music, or what it is, mm-hmm. or what it does that that make people feel like. Because now you see more of the people are doing stuff with with a different point. Like you know what I mean. Like not with the point or intention of like this is how I felt, but the point of intention of like this is how I want people to feel. Like mm-hmm. or this is how I want right. people to think. That right. like was you know what I'm saying? Or this like, is what I think people want. Want right. or this is what I think people want. Yes. Mm, right. So like I feel like that kind of flipped. Or maybe that's just what the music industry does to certain people. It seasons mm. them in different ways. It seasons people. Yeah. That people have to look to, at it more as a business, yeah. Right, yeah, than art. Well, I feel like you should look at look at it as a business. But if you don't, like, there has to be a point. In the other case, I can also say that, like, I'm also fortunate enough to not have to worry to, like, I haven't worried about a bill in, like, forever. So, like, I'm also fortunate enough to, like, not have, like, the strains that most people have to, like, because, like, I I can understand, like, damn, I'm, like, 
Like, I want to do what I love, but, like, I can't, like, afford to, like, do that. Like, I can't afford to. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I have to devote my time towards other things. I can't live my life I want. But, like... But You're saying for, that's how you feel? Or that's how no, that's how, like, other people feel. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. me, like, I feel like maybe because I was fortunate enough to not have to go through all that, that, like, that's why I haven't come to that standpoint yet. But I can always understand where someone else is coming from. Yeah, but at a point, you were, you said you made um <clears throat> that one night beat living out of your car. So it's yes, like... Yes, I actually made it in my car, which is crazy. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, it's not like you just didn't face those same struggles that other people face. Like, why were you able to still be, I'm just going to make how I feel, even though these are my circumstances? Like, what allowed you to look outside of your situation mm. and not be like, oh, I just got to make the, the 2015 trap sound or whatever it is. And like, also, and also, what was making you to, like, where you were just sending beats to Yachty? Because I feel like a lot of producers... Or like they would be like, well, can you shoot me fifty bucks? You can shoot me a hundred dollars for this <laughs> beat type shit. Mm-hmm. Crazy mm-hmm. part is, I've never gotten paid for a beat. Like I've never like gotten yeah. like and and like nobody's ever given me money for a beat. All my money I've ever made off beats was like off royalty checks and like other stuff like publishing and sound exchange and every other thing I mm. like set you up. So I don't know. I've never like gone. I've never had to charge for a beat. So that's what I mean by, like, I don't have to go through the struggles that other producers go through. So, mm. like, I can understand it, but, like, I like when someone asks me for advice, like, I'm like, damn, bro, like, I've been producing all this. Going on. I was like, bro, I, I honestly don't know because, like, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, like, I wasn't the producer who made, like, a bunch of beats, packed the email, and then CC'd right, and right. hid all the people's emails and <laughs> sent it out to all of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm more like go with the flow type. Yeah. Like, well, well, not even go with the flow. Like, it was like, <sighs> like it just happened so fast yeah right? not fast but like so it's natural organic yeah natural like, yeah you really didn't yeah. like force nothing it happened so natural I didn't like have to really do all that right so I don't know how to give advice to someone else who asked someone that or like I don't know how to completely relate with yeah. someone who says like right. damn I had to produce do this for years whatever yada yada uh, this, that, and forth. I had to like be in studio sessions, like banging on people's doors to try and get mm. them to hop on beats. Or like, I never had that. That I, I seen a I seen a tweet this morning. I, I think I sent it to you. It was a tweet this morning, and basically, there's an argument of producers going around saying, when you go up to an artist, a major artist or independent artist, should you charge the beats or should you just give it to them? Mm. And everybody's saying like, oh, you have people that are in a disrespectful. They give the disrespectful energy to artists like, oh, fuck the artists. Like, they got to pay me before they record or, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. just in that manner. And it makes me kind of, makes me understand that that's one of the reasons why a lot of producers don't get, a lot of producers don't get placements because this is what they're trying to get is a more natural, they're trying to get a more natural situation. And they're going at it, they're going at it in like a unnatural way, unnatural yeah, way, way, like a forceful yes. way. And it's yes. like, you got a song with the person that was your friend. You yeah. were giving beats to him. You, he wasn't asking you for money. Mm-hmm. And so this situation, yeah, you can't relate. But at the same time, we all got the same 24 hours in that day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same thing. So mm-hmm. you, I, I wouldn't really like separate. I, w- I wouldn't let you just sit here and just separate yourself. Like, oh, like, and say you're different. I would just say that it's like, it's it's natural. Like, Yeah, I would say, I wouldn't even say that I'm pretty natural. different. I would, I would say that I'm, um, I would say that I don't want to say pretty common because I don't know what is common. But, like, I don't care to find out what is what, mm. if that makes sense. Like, I don't... Maybe that's also another case of, like, why, like, I I haven't had... Like, I've, like I said, I always do stuff by how I feel. I've never cared about, like, what goes on around me. All I care about is, like, who I am when nobody's there mm. and less about who I am when people are. And, yeah. So I've, I kind of shut myself off out in a way, but only because I don't like to see like all the negative stuff the world has now. And like all, like people seem to find a way to bring negativity to like every like crevice of everything. Right. Like I feel that even like on Twitter, like I follow all my friends on Twitter. All of them are muted. <laughs> like I follow all of them because like, I hate when someone quote tweets, like a tweet that like you didn't even have to quote tweet, but you, you, ha- you like made it even worse by like, bringing your complaint to it. Like, I I understand that, like, you're like, maybe someone will, like, will, like, have a similar complaint. But I'm like, why complain at all? Like, just, right. like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, 
Like, why even right. put that energy out there? Like, yeah. just right. continue to like move in whatever direction you feel like you need to until, because I feel like with any idea, with any idea, I, this is what I tell anybody trying to pursue any career, anything, right? I always tell them, just find your hole and dig it, right? So what I mean when I say that is like, whatever type of sound, whatever idea it is, if it makes sense to you, right? And it makes sense to a couple other people, it'll make sense to a lot of people. Eventually, if you keep digging that same hole, if you keep digging it, like you just keep digging that same, eventually you're going to find something, a diamond or a lot, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just find your hole, stick to it and dig it. Now, it's it's hard to say this in retro, it's hard probably to say this in retrospect, but you think if you didn't have the situation, if if you didn't come up the way you did, um, having, you know, that big song with the audience stuff and you kind of didn't have friends that rap, do you think you would have done this, the traditional stuff that these producers are asking you advice on? Do you think you would have, like, tried to sell beats online? Like, what do you think? Well, I, see, I sell beats online now. I got a beat stars. But um, before... Or, like, you think you would have tried the would traditional Would I have tried route? that? I can't, I don't even know. When you were in the car making beats, what was like your, what was my, what was like your mindset? What was, what your was my from? mindset when I was in the car <coughs> making beats? Okay. So when I was in the car making beats, I like, like I said, like music is literally like my drug. That specific part of songs where you loop, what's it called? Like that shit is literally like, I can't even explain it. Like it's, it's like, it's literally the drug part of music. And it's like, you know that feeling? Okay. So it's like, it's always like the first hit. Like it's always best at the first hit. But like after that, you kind of like just keep going with like, <laughs> or with with like, or like with weed, like or whatever, whatever it is, whatever your drug of choice is. Mm. Like that first hit, it's never as good. Like when you hear that song for that first time, and then you come to that part, you're like, "Fuck, this part of the song is so good." And I always feel like just just that idea has always intrigued me into like making music because it's literally my drug. Like I don't mm. know how to explain it. Like it literally is my drug mm. of choice. So what you, is it okay? What does it do for you? All right, I'm saying know. it's your drug. Okay, no. he's just getting geeked up. Like, <laughs> right, right. Is he's it in just, the car is it like giving up. you life? Is it like it's, it's not? Well, first, do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you any of those? Other oh things? well, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, and why the crazy this? thing is, I recently started drinking this year. Mm. I didn't mm. drink before. How old are you? Twenty three. Yeah, I recently started drinking this year. And then, but I smoked like maybe for a year and a half, maybe for like a year and a half I started smoking. But um, so how does music as a drug compare? Like, <clears throat> why is it your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> music is music is like different. It's like, bro, like, cause like you can smoke weed, you can do whatever. And music gives you goosebumps, like nothing Ooh. else does. Like music gives you like something like. I like that, that shit like I don't you I know y'all like, know like, that feeling of producer. Yeah. 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 Like, like, I know y'all know that feeling like mm. you ever made a beat and you was like oh shit like <laughs> you was like oh shit like god damn I don't like <laughs> like you was too excited right. to even finish it like I right. love that bro I literally love that oh, feeling like snap. I don't know how to explain it like, I never even like damn I never even really like sat down and tried to like Think about that shit. Like, what is that feeling like? <laughs> I love like that feeling. Like, I just love it so much. Like, feel good. Like, that's whoa. the drug. That's it's literally like the drug. Yeah, like, like that came uh, out of you. Like, yeah, Ooh. and I feel like if you focus on on that, because like some producers, they have like an idea of like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna make this specific kind of beat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, bro, I don't even know what I'm doing today. I'm going in there, <laughs> and if right. that shit gives me that shit, I'm, I'm feel good. I'm gonna be good for the rest mm. of. The, you know what I'm saying? If I can make like something that makes me like feel something like that makes me want to like almost punch the wall mm. like I'm good like I'm cool like <laughs> all right, so, alright so what about like if you didn't have any royalty checks coming in you didn't have any of the past successes how do you make money during this or do you just keep producing as like a hobby and just keep it as a drug on the side and then just go out and make your money or like what do you mm. do because you I, have a privilege that most people yeah, don't have right. I wouldn't even know bro I don't even know I just feel like like I said, I've always let the way I feel and guide me at, mm -hmm. at whatever point. Because I feel like that's the best way to be you, right? Right. In a so way. that's kind of like In the, sense. what is it called? A mantra? Like something you live by? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that something I live by? No, bro? I'm saying like that's what uh, anyone in any situation, you could just tell them like, look, just go based mm -hmm. off of however you feel. If you feel like. Yeah, but then again, I also can say like everybody walks around with their own like their own blanket of mentalities, um, ego, mm -hmm. um, um, ideals, definitely, whatever, and that can also affect like 
it, well, it actually it absolutely affects everything in your life. Definitely. But that can also, but but it affects like the way you make music as well. So I don't know whether to consider that as like a a thing that other people should live by because I feel like all life is like I feel like okay. So in a lot of cases, people forget. There's so many things that are suppressed, like um, people's idea of like discipline, like everybody's idea of di- people are turned off by the idea of discipline. Like I like discipline is like one of the main things you should work on in life. Mm. Like and it's, a lot of and like yeah. people be like, oh, I want to be a rager. Like people think the idea of being a rager is like, oh, I'm off the wall, no discipline, fuck off. I'm like, mm. no. Like people people will come up to me and be right. like, like I remember someone told me like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be on some fucking shit like Marilyn Manson. I'm like, bro. Marilyn Manson was not on no fucking shit. He, he just <laughs> right. wanted, he wanted, he wanted to con- convey his idea so specifically to you that he put all the work in to bring it to life for you. Right. You see what I'm saying? He disciplined himself to bring that. That's not, that's not uh, uh, an absence of discipline. It's, it's more so like an extreme like rendition of it. Cause like, how the fuck do you discipline yourself every day? I'm going to put in these two contexts these two different contexts. I'm going to be pale as shit. I'm going to go out here wear this makeup every single day. Mm, those are, those are discipline. disciplines that <laughs> you are disciplined. Discipline. And people, people take it, oh, I'm off the wall. I want to be off the wall. <laughs> I'm a rock. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the idea of discipline is very underrated nowadays. Yeah. Ooh, probably and the it most fucks, valuable thing. And that, yeah, it's, it's probably like, and it fucks people up because like, perception is also a big thing. And that's why I always be like, I don't know how to explain a life or a mantra or an ideal for you to go to by because like I don't know what you're thinking I'm not in your shoes I never was like I've never been through any place you well maybe but like I've never like I don't feel what you feel I don't know how you feel like right. so all I can say is like try and be the best person you can be and deal like I said like deal with the the only thing between you and your art or whatever it is your idea is reality so deal with the cards that are dealt to you and try and bring your idea to life the best way with the reality that you're in. Mm. So like, I okay, now um, I understand. Yeah. So like, it's hard to like. I can't really pinpoint like a thing for people or a life by or like a what do I live by? Yeah. I don't know. It's different for everyone. Yeah. I'm kind of just going. I know where the arrow's pointing. I just don't know. I don't know what's too far ahead of the arrow, but I know where the arrow's pointing, and I know as long as I keep pushing behind that arrow. Mm. I'll keep being good. So I feel that. Yeah. Um. So let's go back. So you know, you're in the car. You're making one night. What what uh what VSTs and stuff were in one night? That's a crazy thing. So I use all stock VSTs. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sakura so stock, bro. Sakura, bro. I made my own 808 on Sakura and and Citrus. Like I like Damn. I would mix them. Like yeah, I would mix crazy. 808s and then like. Cause like my favorite part, like I like diving into anything that like bring that feeling like mm-hmm. out of me. Like so, like I'll dive into anything if I can make like an eight oh eight to be like, oh shit, when it goes down this octave while this melody go, <laughs> like rather shit like. So yeah, I use all stock VSTs for a while, and then well for like most of the most for what most people have listened to, all of those are actually stock VSTs. Actually, <laughs> I'm thinking oh, about yeah yeah, I just like sound engineering. Mm. I like to dive into sound engineering. I like making things sound different than what you would think. Like, and the other thing is like, I always had an idea. I was like, I always knew. I don't want to say I always knew that I was that that like, because I feel like everybody always feels like like that. But I always like felt well when I felt like Come a little bit I closer. would I would have like uh my beats would be out there and people would be making Perry type or whatever it is, right? I always was like. I might as well give them sounds that, like, I made, like, in order to, like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, it's mostly stock VSCs, and then I sound engineered them to, like, sound specific ways because I like that. So, mm. Mm. I wanted to ask you, like, if someone, like, to have, like, the mindset, I guess, you have, right, or whatever... The mindset mm-hmm. anybody has is really based on the stuff kind of content you're consuming, which mm-hmm. your Instagram yes. feed looks like, your yes. YouTube feed looks like. Yes, bro. So, here's a okay. Not nah, continue. No, finish, no, finish. Wanna, no, no. Finish, finish, finish. I was gonna ask you, what does your content look like that you feed off of? Mm-hmm. Okay, so two things, right? 
I never, okay, so I'm never on Instagram when I'm out. I don't, I don't go on social media when I'm out because I don't know. I feel like, and the other thing is like, I also keep, I have a phone that has no service that I keep my social media logged into so that when I'm out, I kind of remember to live. And then when I'm like back home, it's like when I go back and check social media. So when people be like, what's taking you so long? I'm like, bro. So on that I, phone, you don't even have social media? Bro, I literally don't. Like, <laughs> I got Reddit. I, I be going through Reddit sometimes. Like, but like. <laughs> <laughs> the most random one to have. <laughs> but I, I don't like, I like, yeah, I don't like to go through social media. Because like, I don't know, bro. Nowadays, like, it's so much like, just like, I feel like what social media does, there was always this, um, crab in the barrel feeling that people got from life before social media existed. What is crab in the barrel? Crab in the barrel feeling. So like the crab in the barrel feeling is like the dis like the 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 like the the maybe like the weight that life feels like that mm-hmm. like like you know like um like the I gotta worry about like life, my bills, whatever is going on in my life. Like mm-hmm. that's the crab that's what I consider the crab in the barrel feeling. And what Instagram and Twitter does is it makes it amplifies that feeling times whatever like and that's like i feel like i i don't know like you mean I, like it just makes a dis more it magnifies the discontent for life or the things that are like yeah. upsetting in life ah uh, whatever it is like all i know is that most people messages <laughs> now the way they try and make it come across is pretty like most people now is like in a negative like everything's like in a negative light. Like if I can flip it, people would rather flip something in a negative light, which is always how it's been. But, or I don't know, maybe before me or before every people were making anything, people were more positive, but I don't know. But I feel like just that, taking that in, because everything messes with you. Like everything is like food for soul. Like you might eat food through your mouth, but like what you see through your eyes and ears, Mm -hmm. like that's food for your soul. Like So like that stuff was like, you got to be careful what you take in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like like, even looking at Twitter, because you know, because you ever notice, like, something will change your mood or something like that? Like, I hate that. Real quick. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I just hate that. So, like, I just try and stay away from it. I guess I just try and live in my own bubble as much as I can. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. big. What was the second part you said? There was two things you wanted to bring up. <sighs> okay, so the first part was that I didn't have, like, I don't walk around with social media. So, mm-hmm. that was the first one. Damn, what then was Then I was you asking, what does your feed look like? Oh, the, the stuff oh, that you okay, yeah. The second thing was like, I follow all my friends because they're my friends, but I also mute all of them <laughs> because yeah. like, uh, people, people don't, a lot of people don't know what they want or what they, who they want to be. Pe- people aren't focused on who they are when people aren't there. They're <clears throat> focused on who they are when people are. All right. More of the ego More, than the true self. Oh, I don't even know if that dives into ego, but like I just feel when you're when you're alone so often, you deal with your best friend and your worst enemy at all times. So which like, is, which is yourself. Mm-hmm. So you deal with your best friend and your worst enemy. So you either choose to be productive and and try and and try and like. I don't know. I kind of feel like it just falls upon you. Like you just learn to like. Damn, I want to like. I can fix me day by day. Like, I can go and be better, like, day by day. And mm-hmm. when I look back, like, I'll be like, oh, shit. Like, I wouldn't be mad. Like, I can't be, I can't say that 2016 me would be mad at 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and right now, like, not at all. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, people just forget about that. Like, I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Whether it's life, it's so much shit. You know people are scared that the world's going to end. What it is. Like, I don't know. You don't know, know what it is? People don't want to, like, People look at everybody else. They see how successful they are. They don't want... They're scared of the process of fixing this. So they're scared of, mm. you know what I'm saying, spending that time. Like, you might have to go duck off for a few months and s- sit out. It, and don't nobody want to sit gonna out. You're going to have fear of missing out. Yeah, like, you're going to mm. be on Instagram. You you ducking out trying to get better and, and train and study. Mm. And you're looking at everybody. Mm-hmm. And you're like, damn. Like, damn, bro just got a rollie. Huh? Right. You'll I'm get sitting here meditating. Right. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here meditating. Bro got a rollie. Right, that's, that's a bullshit. <laughs> nah, Jamie, you know what I think it is even more it's, than that? I think bullshit, man. I think I know what it's been for me, too. It's like... Oh, I do want to hear this specifically. What has it been specifically for you? You don't want to acknowledge where you're at. 
Ooh. So it's not even the oh. process of going through. It's like, dang, I, you kind of have a sense of where you're at. Yeah. But you really don't. It's like stepping on the scale. Yeah. Ooh. People mm. don't want to step on the scale to mm. really see I like that. I like that analogy. You know? Damn. Hey. You might need to write that down. I'll be God. dunking off on <laughs> social media Ooh. for it. We're going to have a, a picture of character with that quote. People are afraid to step on the scale. Oh, God. Nah, but I really think that it's scary, bro. That's true, though. That is true. And like really seeing where you at is scary. Being real with yourself, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's why businesses go out. Like, that's why they don't address their financial mm-hmm. situations because they don't want to see what the real mess is. And most times, it's not as bad as you think it is. Yeah. Yeah. That is very true. Damn, it's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. That's a good, that's a good um a description it's of crazy, that. Bro. Yeah, that is a very good but, description. But of that. See, I ain't even going to cap you. I'm going to run around saying that now. You know what I'm saying? You, <laughs> you, you got to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got y'all. Royalties on every but, time I say that. <laughs> <laughs> we got attorneys <laughs> watching everything. <laughs> right. yeah. See them cameras? Yeah, bro, right there. Bro. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, that shit from personal experience, though, like, I had to step back and size myself up and just, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's mainly it's mainly yourself stopping yourself and getting to the next level is yes. you it's always yourself you. it's, always, it's not it's really a competition with everybody else you shouldn't really look at everybody else because in reality it's, it's you you know mm-hmm. real shit, real shit. Well, that's what you have yeah that's true right. I feel like it's always just you when, when it comes to like you trying to cause like for example uh, I'm gonna go off on like my trials and tribulations of like being an artist Mm. Like, for example, me being a producer, like, you would think that, like, other people would be like, okay, we'll sign other producers, turn artists. Kanye, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but people are still, like, I don't know if it's turned off to that idea or um, I don't know what it is. But people seem, like, as an artist, it's always been way harder for me to put on, put out, like, figure out how to put out music or put out music or do whatever it is as an artist. Mm. And even like me, I had to like go find a distribution deal, like argue with a couple of distribution companies, figure out what's going on, like figure out the best way to put out music, people not telling me shit that I already should have known, me having to go figure that out and then put that in and like adjust. Like, I feel like, I feel like you working on yourself, you find your, you find a way over any wall, no matter Ooh. what, no matter what the fuck the wall is like. If you really want it, you're gonna find a way over that wall, mm-hmm. and that's what that like. That's like point blank period. Like how you should approach anything. Like mm. you need to find a way over that wall. There's not like the wall is there, but there's like there's a door. There's a way to break through it. Like there's a like there's always something. There's so don't like don't just be like. I feel like social media also messes that up because you all you see like other people's ways of like how or you think you see other people's ways of how they traverse through right. music or whatever it is. And then you come with your own idea, like, oh, damn, well, why didn't you, like, nah, like, bro, you're going to have to figure out another way. Like, right. Right. like, like people be like, some people be like, how do you be a, a millionaire? Like, let's go. I'll be like, bro, there's so many ways to be a millionaire. Why are you caring about how, how someone else is becoming Ooh. a millionaire? Like, there's so many ways. There's so many, right. anything goes now. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like, don't even co- go for another nigga's blueprint. <laughs> like, make your own. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Cause it's kind of like that meme, you know what I'm talking about, where the dude is like digging and there's like big ass oh, gems. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the dude gave up. Right. <laughs> Cause he probably was on Instagram. He's like, oh shit, you know how I'm, mm-hmm. I'm making beats. He had just checked the Instagram. I'm making beats. He was like, damn, buddy over there just found the gem. Like, right. you know. But damn, he had like, a clothing line. I'm trying to make beats. Let me try this clothing line shit. Right. You know what right. I mean? Shit like that. Yeah, people do give up on their e- ideas. But then that makes me think, like, damn, you didn't really care about it then. Like, what was your right. what was your intention behind that idea now mm-hmm. at this point? Like mm-hmm. you switched to like like what did you really want to be a producer did you really want to be an artist did you re- what was your point and for me i always like the artistic side of things because i love like clashing into mentalities and like seeing how things go and like pictures and visualizations and whatnot so i always like the and sounds i always like the 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 artistry side of it like i i like to do it because art intrigues me so way more than like anything that anyone can like do like in front of me like Any kind of, like, a magician could show me, like, him doing magic. And I'll be like, okay, that's cool. And, like, whatever. But, like, you show me, like, a picture that, like, might, like, I don't know why. Like, certain pictures, like, they, like, hit your brain in certain areas. You'd be like, what the fuck? Like, like I, I don't know that. why. You're like, I can't explain it. Maybe that's just something in certain producers or in all producers or in all artists. But, like, that's, like, the, the divide for me. Like, I'd be like, so what are you doing it for? Mm. 
Are you doing it for the art? Are you doing it for money? Are you in a situation right now? Are you trying to figure out? Like, are you just trying to figure out? And people who are just trying to figure out, like, what it, whatever it is, what they want to do. Because a lot of people don't know what it is, what they want to do. Right. But, like, I, I don't judge them. But I also feel like when you do something, you should never do it with the intent of, I'm going to, I'm here to, to, to beat out. I'm here to... I'm here to to be better than anyone else. You should always do it with the intent, I'm here to be better than myself yesterday. And that's the only person you should really fight with. Mm. How, do I, how do I feel about that? Because <laughs> who are you beating out? Like, what, what, what are you beating out? Like, as a producer, who are you beating? Even as a rapper, like, who are you beating out, bro? Like, I feel, that's what I was saying earlier. It's, it's more of a competition between you and yourself Self. like you might think the competition between you and the other folks mm, like which right. it is it like in the in the like when the labels put them next put you next to each other be like numbers 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 but you don't know what's going on behind closed doors not even you what's going on behind closed doors you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow mm. you yeah. don't you don't know like, like if you're competing mm-hmm. with kanye you mm-hmm. might be limiting yourself yeah i feel like you do limit yourself when you compete with someone like but when, when you, you compete with yourself, self, you're just unlimited. unlimited. Oh, mm-hmm. Literally. Right. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Hey, that. hey, right. that was a good one. <laughs> I'm going to need uh, royalties on that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's stacking them up. <laughs> All right, look, y'all. I got a, I got a topic. I want to see how y'all feel about this. Mm. All right. So we're talking about the purpose of doing things. Why are we doing things? Like, your intentions behind things. Mm-hmm. And I've been hearing a lot lately about people pursuing their passions as a business versus just leaving the passions as a passion mm. to do the business as a business. Like what uh, Kurt was saying? Yeah, but even even more than him, like it's just been uh, on my mind a lot lately. So mm. how do y'all feel about people, like we, we talk about if your goal is to be financially free and to have a life that you've always wanted to live, do you keep music as music and then go start a business in something that's need-based like taxes Man. Uh, I feel like I'm leaning. Trees. I feel like I'm leaning more towards that that route. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. really? getting some cash flow. Mm. Do that first, so it can supply everything else that you want. Yeah, because then you yes. can just chill. Like if you got yes. cash flow coming right. in, yeah. you can you can spend ten thousand dollars on on a project. Mm. Where whereas like if you if you if you if you if you worked a job for that ten thousand, like bro, if I lose this ten thousand, I gotta yeah. start back from scratch. Mm. So do we? I don't know. You know do we saying? change the narrative from saying like, yeah, y'all follow your passion, stick to this music game, or is it like, look, if this music thing you want to take serious, go because you need up, money, you, you need, you need this. Go start a tax business. It's simple or whatever it is that you want to do. Then circle back to this, and if it's something that you want to do, now you have the backing to do yeah. it. And yeah, and yeah, specifically yeah, specifically yeah. for artists, because I've, I've I've talked to people recently, they're like, yo. This is not the same game as it was four years ago, oh, 2016, no, where you sure. could you could do it organically just by putting up songs mm-hmm. on SoundCloud. Like I feel like the powers that be, the label, not the powers that be, but the the real the, the real platforms. players, the real hustlers that, that are doing this shit, they 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 figured out that organic shit and they kind of like got it on lock. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like now if you want to do this shit, you really got to have money behind it. You got to have a real plan. It's not so much about oh, I'm gonna put out a song a week on SoundCloud and see what happens, mm-hmm. kind of shit. What what are your no. thoughts on that? <clears throat> It's a lot of topics right there. It is. A lot to digest. I feel like, like I said, you'll find, like, whatever wall you can make it over. But, like, the other thing is, like, I also, like, I don't just make money off producing. Like, uh, like one thing that I was, I was always a tech guy. So, like, I used to work, like, when I was younger, I used to work in, like, I worked <laughs> at, I had two jobs. I used to work at a home goods, and I used to work at a iPhone and computer repair shop. Mm. So, like, I used to always buy, buy and sell websites when I was younger. So, really? Like, yeah. So, like, that's something that, and I, I still like to look into, like, all things, well, all things, everything, now that I'm thinking about it, but because time can afford me that right now. But, um, uh, like, I always figured out, like, ways of doing, like, well, even now, well, I've always lived completely off music for the past couple of years, so I can't really, like, dive in, like, be like, okay, yeah, I did this, do this, but, like, um, like, in, in bringing more of a business, I do see how people feel like they need to do that. But I also feel like, nah, not in a sense. I feel like there people battle themselves on the idea of what they want themselves to look like in the future and they think mm-hmm. they need to take these steps to get to it. Right, right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. each one of us, like, we have a picture in our head of, like, what our future self looks like. Like, mm-hmm. our ideal self. Like, you literally have, like, a, a picture of it. Right? Mm-hmm. I would assume. Right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, like... I don't, I don't know. 
but yeah. but I like I'm sometimes like I I can I can attest that like most of my life like I've right. had like a picture like I can always re- remember like a picture of myself like my ideal self so like I always feel like when you figure out what your ideal self is doing in the future mm-hmm. is when like you figure out like you're gonna figure out how to get there like you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. all you have to do all you have to do as a person is figure out what it is you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't even think you need necessarily need to make it business oriented. Like people might feel like that. Cause even for me now, like I'm not very business. Well, I am because I have like business management and like stuff like that. They worry like about that stuff. So now I But can't. see, see, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> you got business management, management and yeah. so without that, without that, you putting your passion and you expressing yourself through this music. When they wouldn't be able to further Fair make more enough. money and stuff like that. So if he didn't have the business, yeah. If he if he didn't have that, I see what you're saying. If you I didn't a, have to worry about, you need a budget it. for that. You get what I'm yeah. saying? And and we could say like, we don't need money to make music. But at the end of the day, what it is is like people come. I look in the comments all the time. Um, producers on Instagram, like bro, like most producers, even when they want to come out, come from out of town, they think they want to like, yo, I want to come here and I want to make some money. I want to come here. Yeah. Like everybody always wants to go places and want to get money and make plays and stuff like that. When really it's like, this is just just as much of a business as if you were selling something else on the website. Selling on the website, like yeah, if literally. you don't have a brand behind it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it it's caught, like that flip you know what I'm saying? You, it's not gonna sell anything. Yeah. You feel me? So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to find a way to get some money. So it, you have to be more realistic with yourself and be like, am I gonna run around? Like that's you dealing with the cards. Of the, that's you dealing harsh. with the reality of like no, but that's I mean, literally facts. But I don't, yeah. I don't want to be harsh and say that go get it, go get a job because this is music. You know what I'm saying? This is real life, and this is you know what I'm saying. You need money to live. You know, you need money to invest. But I'm just saying, like we make it so we we shame people. I guess it's, we shame people for having jobs or doing something else or taking another avenue to make money. You know what I'm saying? Why did why they doing music? I feel like we shame people. Mm. Well, job. yeah, I, I feel people, like that people is, shame themselves. Nothing. I mean, yeah, we don't shame people. My bad, my bad. <laughs> we definitely yeah. don't shame people. Culture, people. like the culture in general. Because yeah, for me, for me, I, like I, that, I did uh, so many things and made myst- money. What's not the word? Not mystique. Paradigm? But there's like a, a pressure. I feel like oh. so we all like paradigm. Like a lot of people. Mental, I think it's like a, a mental paradigm? structure. Oh. I don't know. But JB, what I wanted, what I was going to say is like, I've made money so many ways. Like, I've made money nerdy ways, right. cool mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. But there's like, 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 shit. like all right, right, look. This, I think like this music stuff, right? If you want to come make money off of it, then make money off of it. Come into it knowing you want to make money off it. If you want to come in here and make money off it, yet you want to express yourself with passion, then you need to set yourself up to enter into it that way. Right. To make, make a room plan, right? Make a have plan. You know, at our events, right? Some of our yeah. events you have. You can tell the guys who got money that just came here because they love right. producing. <laughs> Versus you can see the guys that come that are like... Y'all have events? Bro, yeah. I knew, why the... You, you been asleep. Bro, you been asleep. Bro, you been asleep. But yeah. like... Bro, I, I don't think, even leave the house, to be honest. I like, think yeah. it's like when anyone's going to like some sort of like... You go into it being like, some, I got to make something work off of this event. So your intentions are a little different than mm. if you were just like, mm. I don't need none. I'm coming here just because like, right. for the experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not dependent on a great outcome. I'm, yeah, I'm not looking for this to change mm. my life. Right. I'm not if looking for goes- Sony Digital to, just to love my shit and want to <laughs> right. sign me. Right, right. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, those pressures can make you act a way that you normally wouldn't act because whenever you have financial pressures behind you or any of these other pressures, right. they influence your decisions. Mm. Yeah. Now, you ever been around someone that's right, dumb that's rich? Like, yeah, bro, exactly. dumb rich, they chilling Let's all just the time. do it. Like, and when, when they think about something, like, oh, let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like that. Oh, I need to act now. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh shoot! You just said what? All right, all right. Give me that address right now. I'm gonna. I, don't need, I, don't <laughs> I wouldn't. Need that. So I wouldn't force. I wouldn't force like younger producers to just yeah, yo, go get a job. But I would just say that there are so many different ways to make money. Don't don't even get. Don't even just go buy a laptop and get FL Studio because you see somebody making money off it. Like right. don't don't jump into this just for the money. Like, and I feel like there's a lot of producers that come around me, and it might take them three years to start producing. Just because they're coming around me and just looking at me like, because hmm. they think, I'm, you know what I'm saying? They just come it's, around it's, me. Man, it's real hard to say because, bro, like, yeah, you might tell, like- you might want to tell someone to to do something else, but it's like if they would have just put that time and effort into this producing shit, they might have 
I had a breakout song. So I, like that's why I really I don't know. I'm, I'm like you know what I'm saying like if someone was like yo man I'm trying to make beats I'm trying to make uh, make money off of selling beats, telling them like oh well, maybe you should diversify and try to make money in other ways. You know maybe you should try to start a business fixing phones. But that might be the same person that it's like if they didn't start that business to fix phones, maybe they might have went been at the right place at the right time and, and made the right song. Yeah, and, but I'm not telling them not to come in here. Like like the dude said, you want to come make, I want to make some money selling beats. Mm-hmm. If that's what you're going to come here, all right, then that's what you're going to come in here for. And we're going to do it. Like yeah. you're coming here to make money off of the selling that's, beats. That they need money. Like they, so I'm not yeah. saying don't come in here to make some money. Like if there's people like, I'm coming mm. into this business because I want to make money off of music. Cool, that's fine. Right. But mm. just don't get it twisted. Don't come in here being like, I want to, Express myself. Right. You gotta, yeah, not, not you gotta know what come way. with it. Yeah. What we're, we're making money yeah. we're, we're from the music. We, we're getting so philosoph- philosophical. Well, philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanna know y'all, for the people that are tuning in watching at home, what do y'all like most? Do y'all like the philosophical stuff, the, the mm. conceptual stuff? Do you like when mm. we kind of stay more sticking to the story and the technical and business advice kind of stuff? We really uh, definitely leave a comment and give us your input. You wanna know what's crazy? Here, I'm about to, I'm about to bring up an, uh, an, an argument. <clears throat> so, I don't know if we what can can we can talk about anything like here, right? Yeah. So, so <laughs> as a, it, it as depends. A, okay. No, for, so, what do you think about a porn star that doesn't like to do porn? That's the same thing as a producer, right? Like, I'd be feeling just, like, so what's your point of doing? Like, if you don't like, so like, that's the same as thing. when you enter in as a porn star and you look at oh well, well when a porn star enters in, you would assume like you did porn because you like doing that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Right. You know, like Nine times out of ten. I don't know if it's nine times out of ten, but most of the time, they don't. You know what I'm mm. saying? Well, just for the bag? <laughs> yeah, like, it's mm. not even just for the bag. Like, I don't know. Like, or the fame, everything Whatever that comes it with is it. that they, they're they looking for out of it, but they're not liking the job that they're doing is, like, my point. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you go into a job, n- like, not originally liking what you're doing, then you're never going to, like, find a way to like it because you're, mm. like, that's not your point of being there in the first place. I think with the porn star analogy, it's, you have to boil it down. What is your true? What is your true goal that you yeah. want it? Because okay, it may be like being a porn star is just the vessel to get you to what you wanted, like the fame, money, and freedom. Right? That's trash, though. Like but that's what saying, people do. But that's what they do. They're like, I don't know how to get to this goal <laughs> I want to. So this porn way is the way that I will go, even though I don't. They like were it. like, but like some people be like, this porn way is the easiest way for me to go. Don't right. want to admit it's it. So like, you know it's what I'm a saying? Vessel, right. It's a, a I guess. I goal. mean, I don't know. I feel like anything you approach, if you do your job, bro, like. Try and love it. Like, at least try and love it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because that's when, like, you really bring out, like, you bring out your 100 into whatever it is you're doing. Your best self. Yeah. Like, because, like, if you're just doing something just because, like. I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little. You become not lazy, but, like, you become. Everything is half-assed, I guess. You could say at that point. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, let me flip this on you. What? Ooh. What is Burberry? <laughs> <laughs> what is what is good Perry's? What do you love right now? What is your passion? What is what is your what's your Ooh. main thing in twenty twenty, bro? Well, hmm, you have to be more specific because, like, okay, so what is what do you mean, like, uh, what like do you enjoy in doing? music? What do I enjoy in, doing in, in life? Anything in life? What I, what do you want your career to be? Music is still my drug. I can't I can't let. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I feel like that that's like I'm always gonna be in music for my entire life. So, but I also I enjoy so many things. I enjoy like uh, a lot of people like I camp a lot. Um, I hike. I um I like to go to art shows. I like to I like to hunt. I like mm-hmm. to fish. I like to like. I like mm. to explore. I like to travel, I like to explore, I like to I like to I like to see ideas. I like to I like to like the other day, like well I do have social media logged in, but just my Finsta. So like like shit like <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. What's Finsta? <laughs> yeah, a I got a, Instagram. a fake Instagram. Uh-oh. But like on my fake Instagram I'm just supposed to like so like I like like the idea like for example, like I saw this picture the other day on an artist uh well I saw this picture like a long time ago on Tumblr, right? And it's crazy, cause this right. Ah. It look, but it looks like the thing from Stranger Things, right? Scary. But it's so crazy how two people thinking about two completely different things could come to the same idea, like same looking idea. What like, you like, I gotta see the picture. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It looks like the thing from Stranger Things. You see what I'm saying? Hold on. It looks right like a here. big spider. 
You ever seen Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you're talking yeah. about. But it's just so crazy that people like doing two completely different things can come to similar ideas. Oh, so you're saying they created that and they may not have watched Stranger no. Things, but they this, still... This was way before that. Oh. It was years. Like, yeah. years. So like, it's just so crazy to me. Like, like, I don't know. I like seeing ideas and like, I like... Art? Life. I don't know. Mm. Not even just art. Just life. <laughs> like... I, I, I value that. I take that. Yeah, like I can't really like. What about career wise though? Career wise, I, my my career is my life. Like my life is my career. Like I feel is it like being an artist is it being a producer. As being an artist, producer, whatever it is, I put for like because I've never lived off anything that wasn't me. Like I've never sold anything that wasn't attached to me. Like and made and lived off of it. Like my entire life, I've always lived off anything that was attached to me. So like whether it be merch, music, or whatever, mm. you know mm. what I'm saying? I've never like. I don't know. I've never like, and I've always been alone. So like, I've never like really thought about like, what is, what is my, what is my main, like, what is my main sniz or whatever you could say. Like for mm. me, I'm just like, it's just like, I'm being me, I guess. And then just like trying to figure out the best ways to live being me. And I guess, like, as you go along, you learn more and more ways, things to monetize and more and more things to, what's this called? And mm. I guess at that point, like, I don't know, that's the point I'm at now. Like, mm. I'm just living. Like, I'm not just living. Because I feel like when you're living and then you have the, you have, like, the, what is it called when some, when you have, like, your own, like, motivation. When you're living, when you, when you learn to live and have your own motivation to live, mm. it's like when, like, how I live. That's how I live. Like Run it I, back. You said your own. What do you mean by your own, own motivation, motivation to live? Like, like, you know how you say some people who get super rich, they're just chilling. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I like. When I said that, I meant chilling as in they're not pressured to do decisions yeah, they don't yeah, want to yeah. make. Yeah, but some mm -hmm. people, some people, they become, like, this is just an example, but some mm -hmm. people who like get rich, they get complacent or lazy mm -hmm. or whatever. Right? I just feel like, like for me, like I'm just like, I found like my my motivation has always been me trying to, me trying to be the best me I can, and that's it. Like, I don't know what to explain, like, as what is my, what is my forte? Like, what, is, even if you say music, like, some people might listen to my beats and be like, is this really fire? Like, is this, mm. like, is this it? Like, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know if it's, it's it. Just, I, it's just you. It's just me. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, if you're asking me, like, even now, I don't even listen to my own music, bro. Like, I literally don't. So, like, I don't even know. Like, I'm just kind of just being me. Like, literally. Like, I don't know how, how else to explain it. So, mm -hmm. if you were looking at yourself from a third person's point of view, like an eagle's eye, how would you describe, like, where you're walking or, like, what you're doing? Is it just that, oh, this guy is just being the, figuring out how to be the best <laughs> him every day? And that's kind of the path that he's following? What is the path that I'm following? Not necessarily following Not or the understand. path that you choose to walk. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's some deep philosophical. It's <laughs> a lot of <laughs> so so like um how can I say it? Well, I already like in in most situations, I already look at myself in a third person view because mm -hmm. I feel like that's the best way to account for everybody's feelings in the room. Mm -hmm. That's like the best way for you to be like, like, yo, mm -hmm. this person's like feeling this way, this person's feeling with it. It's your best way to look at everybody's like, like even now I sit here like I'm looking at you, but like in my head, I have a, a like a, a video camera, like right here, looking at myself, <laughs> looking at you. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I like I'm always trying to count everybody's feelings in the room because I feel I feel like that's good. And like that's good. Heard, like, like that's, that's my way. Like that's my because I'm an extremely visual person. Like in my head, I have like this picture of like what a year looks like to me too. Or like I, or I feel like almost everybody has it. And the other thing is like uh. I live my life off in betweens. I call it in betweens. I don't know what it is. In what is in my my the definition to in betweens for me is like you know those thoughts that you're thinking, and in between conversations or in between moments, and you don't you don't say or convey them, right? I make it a point to always try and say and convey those thoughts. Like it's always some thoughts in between. Like like yeah, those I'm thoughts you're always so like I don't know whether you're afraid at one point. Or you're you're whether you're afraid or you're scared or you're you think someone's gonna judge you or whatever. Like I always make it a point to convey those thoughts. Because like, sometimes those thoughts are the most important for others. Like because mm -hmm. like because once someone else understands like, oh, we we like 
now that I know we're having these same in between thoughts, because everybody has them. Right. I know, I know y'all do. Like, y'all don't even have to sit here and like, I, whatever. Like, I know y'all do. So like, once you realize, because nobody ever talks about it or wants to talk about it or brings it up or thinks of or says anything, uh, maybe to your loved ones or whatever. But like, once you can bring that to like your everyday life, well, th- well that's what I do for me. Like, that's like what I guess you could say, like part of the path of me, my walk or me walk. I, I feel like. No, I wanted um, when you're talking about these in between thoughts, I needed, I wanted a, a little clearer definition so I could like understand from okay. myself. Okay, you mean like okay, let's say me and JB are talking. I say blah 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 blah. Then it's like that little pause, and then everybody's like, hmm, let's register. How do we feel about that interaction? And then we move on to another subject. Are you talking about that's the in between? That's thoughts? that's a little bit of it, but like okay, some more stream uh, version of it. Imagine if you and him had a problem, like, but mm. to you, he doesn't know you have the problem. You are the underlying. Like you have the underlying problem. You're like, damn, damn like, man. Like, yeah, like not even that. Like, <laughs> man, like, damn it. The like, I feel like those are the in betweens that you should convey. Like, those are like, oh, okay. like, or not even not even being angry or like, you ever had an idea like in between of someone yeah, talking, exactly, exactly and you're like, damn, like, girl, like, <laughs> like, let me get like, that's what I feel like are the in between. You be like, and, nah, let me like, let me not say it because yeah, they might, they like I don't know why, like, I don't ruin know. the relationship, right, yeah, yeah, ruin the vibe. Oh, Those so are right. just like your true feelings, your right. truest, the truest form of your feeling. That's what I was going to say. Thinking. That being said, you Kanye really type shit. No, but that's that like Kanye free thinking type shit, huh? That's Is it? A, oh damn! Oh, when, when, when that's said, actually kind of fire. When Whoa. he said, "Um, George Bush hates white people," or would you, yeah, say, like, I guess that would be an in between thought. Yeah, like that would be an in between. Most people like, would, like, would just keep that shit to themselves. Yeah, like, that would be in between. Like, <laughs> like always trying to like, because that's where the I don't want to say that's where the truest you lies, but that's like everyone's it's thinking where it, you're yeah. like that's like where you are. Like I don't know how to explain in that it. moment. That's what you're scared. That's where you are, and that's what you yeah. But there's some times where it might be best to just keep them shit to yourself. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe just deliver them in the best in a in a in a more gentle, gentle way. way. Yeah. Everybody's scared of the truth, though. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. That's that's why we that's why we got Instagram and we look at everybody behind the picture and shit. So it's mm-hmm. like, but you know, one thing I can't stand is when people are like, "I'm just being real" or "I'm just being honest," and they that use it as an excuse to be rude. I do not oh, like that. Nah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. the, because yeah. nah, I feel like okay. you can always convey the message mm-hmm. in a nicer way. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do nah, not that's like real that. shit. Nah, you're right. You definitely but I feel like that's different. Like that's you can feel yeah. someone's intent. Like some people just be ass for no reason. <laughs> you be like, why? Like for what? Like yeah, well, right. some people aren't yeah. even trying to be mean. Some people are are trying to figure out how, how to, to start do it doing it the best in way. Ah. And so like that's the first stage. Is like I just need to get to the in between. But okay, now the in between, I need to do the in between thoughts. But it's in a nicer delivery. I feel like in in order to to like be really good at like figuring yourself out and finding out what the best way to do that is for you to start off doing that to yourself. Like uh, thinking about those in between, like catching yourself, like literally catching those thoughts. Be mindful of your thoughts. Like Mm -hmm. at most times, like always catch it and be like, why did I think this? Like why, what made me come to this? Like even sometimes like you ever just randomly get angry because like someone's in your space or like, when you take yourself out of it, you're like, why am I mad about that? Like, why? Like, what's Honestly, the true like, what is the true source of that? Mm-hmm. And I feel like once you come to that, that's when you come, you become a better, like, conveyor of your thoughts and you have better grasp of everybody else's thoughts and have a, and have a better energy around you to be able to, like, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? And that's the best way to live life. Anybody right? in a romantic relationship or any yeah, relationship definitely. knows, you gotta be like, aware of oh when you and your, your girl, everything she's doing getting on your nerves or everything he's doing is getting on your nerves, stepping back and being like, okay, what is it that I'm really mad at and what is bothering me? Yeah, that's crazy. You know what's crazy? That's actually helped me with like relationship. But now I have like a super disattachment to like everything. So I don't know. But like, I feel like it does help you with relationships and like, all of that too. Well, it's probably the best. That's probably one of the uh, first ways you learn, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Hell yeah. You gotta understand yourself. Mm. Mm-hmm. So let's. Uh, <laughs> I love the philosophical stuff. Okay, let's jump into. Uh, the... Let's jump into these. Let's jump into <laughs> these gems. Brain. And now that these weren't gems, but mm-hmm. let's talk about more the producing ch- typical producing gems mm-hmm. for the people that are at home. Never had a big hit. Mm-hmm. Maybe never even really had rappers work with them. Let's walk them through what it was like. To finally have that that hit after one that came out, SoundCloud views are going up. Then what happens? Okay, so literally, let's let them let's help them visualize. Okay, it. so visualize. I'm gonna visualize. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up the calendar of the year in my head, right? So I gave him the beat August of 2015, mm. and August, September, 
no, is it September, October, November? Mm-hmm. Yeah, September, October, November, December. And then January is, well, December is when, like at the end of December is like when it started going up. And then January is when like, I want to say the when everything changed, that's when like people started emailing me. Coach K hit us up. Like, like we went to QC all like the whole nine. And I want to say after that point. What's that like? Were you guys on some like, hold on. We want to make sure no one's trying to take advantage of us. What, what were you guys mm. thinking? I don't know. Coach K. I've mm, Yes and no. But like Coach K already had like a, a prior um a prior relationship with Yachty's dad. Oh yeah. And so that. I yeah, that, yeah, I think that's like and bro, Coach K is like genuine, like he's like a very like straightforward, he's extremely straightforward. And like in any kind of manager, I feel like if you're looking for a manager out there, look for the manager who's the most straight. Like it doesn't matter whether whether necessarily whether his ideas match your ideas. Just like make sure he's as straightforward and can handle like like as straightforward as possible and can convey like the best point like to anyone, mm-hmm. right? And coach, is he straightforward and not rude? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's he's like, bro, mm-hmm. coach is fought. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so at the, in January, like coach came and find us. I remember Yachty was flying to to Rocky's house too, but I don't I, I don't know what they was doing out there per se. But I remember he's because he was the one flying around. He had the 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 buddy pass. I was just still here in Atlanta, and then so um, yeah, Coach K came and find us, and then we went with QC. And I don't know. It's always like QC's fine because it's like it's such a it's such a family. Like it's so it's hard to explain. Like when we made those projects, like um, the walk around in the studio with socks, sleep in there. I took a shower in the bath. Like take showers in the bathroom. Like it's fire. It's fire over there. Did you sign? You signed to a produ- as a producer? At no, first? I didn't. It's crazy because I actually mm-hmm. did post a picture of me signing, but I didn't sign uh, uh, to to QC as a producer. I actually signed to Rick Rubin for publishing. What the heck? Yeah. Rick Rubin, the, the yeah, wow, he's a yeah. That's who I like. People always be like, "Aren't you signing QC?" I'm like, no, that was me signing a contract like to Rick Rubin. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get how far? How much further is that down the line? Uh, we want like we want to hear about that later. Maybe like a year. Two. I can't remember. Okay. Let's not skip that year, yeah. though. Let's okay, so then let's go, to, let's go to January. January, Coach came, came and got us. I guess that's a, like January. Then we, went to, then we went to South By. Those are like the first like set of shows we really, or I really was doing with, with anybody or Yachty, with Yachty. And then you come around South By. This is what, 2016, right? This is 2016. South By, doing shows. That's, that's literally when I li- like, my like life of music started. I want to say like doing shows, and then I've never like really like stopped or tapered off. Like then going around, then we finally like. But I didn't get any money until okay. So the entire year twenty sixteen. So I didn't actually get any money until twenty seventeen mm. or late twenty sixteen. Late twenty sixteen. Now I'm sure. What, so, nine so how were you getting by it? during this time? Huh? How were you getting by? Uh, well, me and Yachty always lived together. We were um like he took me into his mom's house. And yeah, so I, that's where I stayed. Uh, and then after that, but after that, we were just like on planes and like doing shows like for forever. And then, and then we finally got a house in um, that summer. And then I did, I remember he had give like, uh, we, I had got like my first little check off any producing, right? It was like $13,000. And I was like, I'm glad that was the first little thing because I blew that shit fast as fuck. It was like $13,000. And I was like, it's gone. I bought like TVs and furniture <laughs> with it. But it was like, I still got those TVs. Like a BMI check or something like that? I don't even know. Mm. They just gave me $13,000. <laughs> or fifteen. I can't even remember. But they gave it to me like, it was like around like maybe July or August. And then I remember I spent that on like furniture and stuff because we was moving into the house. And then come around... There was this dude who used to always hit me in my email. He was like, yo, Rick Rubin wants to talk. And I was like, bro, what the hell is it? Like, <laughs> first, I didn't know who Rick Rubin was at first. <laughs> um, but then uh, I went and did some research. I was like, Rick Rubin, I don't want to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, but then, um, then I, uh, I actually like in the back and it was like, actually Rick Rubin. I was like, oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, oh shit. So he invited me out to, so after that, they invited me out to Shangri-La. I went and talked to him and like, I met him. What's this called? And then, yeah, I, I signed a publishing deal with Rick Rubin. And then that's when, like, yeah, ever since then, 
that's like 2017. And then after that, it was just like 2017 was just filled with tours. 2018 shows too. And then now we're in 2019. So that's what it is. Yeah. I got a question. So when y'all are going on tours, right? You said you didn't get your first check till a long time after nine months. Yeah, maybe nine months. Make sure you're talking to me. How did it feel? Or I'm assuming when you're doing these shows, somebody's got to get paid. Right? So I'm assuming the artist, Yachty's getting paid. Yeah. What did it, did you ever feel upset that I contributed to <clears throat> this massive success, yet I have still yet to get paid? While, this is what Toon was talking about at the town hall. Huh? Right. When, mm-hmm. While somebody else is getting 30, 20, 30, 40,000 a show, or this person has is able to buy these things and be financially free, yet I'm still not anywhere near that level. Mm. No, I never was upset or angry about it. I didn't. Did you notice? Did you were you able? No, to obviously see? I noticed, but did I? I'm trying to think of even even if I really thought about it. Like I thought mm. of like I want to say like 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 I said, I always like my entire life. Like I've always had like a third version person view over my shoulder, so I've always been like very aware of like why I think things and like my thoughts. So like I don't like to like bring any thoughts of like anger negativity or anything to my mind because once you sit and dwell on it you sit and and it makes you bitter like it makes you like you know what i'm saying like and i don't even think like because i don't even care do i care about like i don't want to say i don't care about money i don't even really like i just want to be me like i just want to be like like i don't know i was just happy to be doing that's what i mean so but at the end of the day it's also a respect like when you i understand like not wanting to sit around and be bitter but it's also like dang i'm kind of playing my like am i getting played in this situation uh, right you see i don't even know how to explain whether you're getting played or not or are you just seeing like i'm living this life this is amazing i'm content with this I know there's something going on back here, but I'm just so happy with the life that I'm living. Mm. But, yeah, I was going to say, like, f- f- as Where's an example. Look? Oh, my bad. Y'all on these mics, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who's been close to the mic this entire time. As a good, for a good example, let's say the whole, nine, the whole nine months you didn't get paid, right? Uh-huh. It was like nine or ten months. Maybe eleven. I don't know. It's close okay, to Okay, ten, year. eleven months you're not getting paid. And the artist, and let's just make a more, we're, we're not going to use your, your example. We're going to use a, Let's say that artist is your homie. You made a beat. You made a beat for him, and okay, now y'all on tour. Okay, cool. Now, now the artist is getting forty thousand per show per night. You do three a week, and you know what I'm saying. You wait the you wait in eleven months, and you like. So do you say, yo, let me get a three five a night? You know what I'm saying? Out right. of the forty, you know what I'm saying? That that's kind of what he's. And that's yeah. That's what not even like, thirty five. Like, more like twenty on, twenty, not, like fifty. Because that, that's what Toop was saying is like. And, and and we're not trying to like no I can believe no, 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 no. we're not yeah. trying to back no, in the corner at all. Yeah. Yeah. But we're literally, so basically, Toom's whole thing is like yo, especially in a situation like this, it's like the breakout hit was a song you produced. You know what I mean? It's half mm-hmm. your, half him. You know what I mean? And it's like, and he's his whole thing is like yo, there should be some kind of performance fee when rappers are out here touring, especially, I understand little shows, a couple bands and shit, but when we're talking these big shows, okay, are you talking, talking about as a producer or like? So there should be a little touring fee. You mean like for rappers performing songs that you that's do? Exactly. exactly. That's that's what you you know huh. Toon, Toon right? Mm-hmm. That, you know DJ Toon right? DJ Toon. Yeah, yeah. producer. But yeah, so he, he, you know he's a legendary producer. Um, but yeah, his whole thing is like, yo, like if 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 if, if rappers are making fifty thousand, hundred thousand, whatever at Rolling Loud, and the main song they're performing is my song, or any song they're performing is my song, it's like I need twenty yeah, percent, some sort of percentage. Yeah. There needs to be mm. what do you call it, a, a producer three hundred and sixty deal or right. some shit like that. Mm. Yeah. But then there's also the point. I do understand the artist is the one actually getting up there and performing, so. That could be if I'm an artist, I'd be like, all right, I have no problem giving you this twenty thousand or whatever percentage of my fee, but you need to be up there performing with me. Not even that. It's just like here's the crazy thing: I was performing for completely free for like tours, like multiple tours. I seen footage of you. Doug tour, (laughs) Doug tour, I was Doug tour, Ray Schremer tours, both of them. The Yachty tours, both of them. Like I was doing like 
I wasn't. I don't know. Now I'm thinking about. It, I don't know what the. Heck <laughs> See, that's what I mean. It's like yo, <laughs> I, like, been it. I was yeah. doing all those shit, tours man. are not easy work. Like right. that's yeah, it's what not. eleven it's months not. out of your right. life. You're putting in all this effort. In. Right. It's expensive as heck. Yeah, all the clothes, yeah, like yeah. The overseas time. tours. Like I don't right. know. You know, I actually don't know. <laughs> but um, hmm. As far as like producers getting a small fee for artists performing on stage, they I don't even fee. know if I can. <laughs> I don't know if I can even have a say. <laughs> Cause do the uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, they made the they made the vibe. They composed <laughs> it. <laughs> well, here's the truth. Here's the truth of it. Cause I always be like, cause like there is some points when artists do cross a line with the producer. Like there's there's a there's a line. Like, well, not for me. I feel like just because me and Yachty were like always friends from the beginning, yeah. like we always had like a line. Like we always knew that was there that we would never cross. You know what I mean? Right. But like for other people, I feel like there's like a, mm, damn, that's a, that's a hard fucking, huh. Should they get a percentage of the show? Because without the beat, there's no right, song. There's no literally, song. there's no song. Now that I'm, like, if you're thinking, what are you gonna turn up to? Well, like, yeah, like no, nobody want to hear you go out yeah. there acapella uh, when you already auto tune over a song, like, right. and you're just like basically like putting another melody on top of the right. melodies that are already laid there. We're talking about you know greedy, though. <laughs> at least a ten percent. So but now, then, but then you got to break it down because what if they're what if their whole set there's like fifteen, ten producers. Involved, uh, you know what I mean? Fuck. Yeah, that's a, also what I, I, mean, I. But that's what the job of an artist is: is to be that front man and to be the performer. Like yeah. you were the performer. Yeah, that's so your you job. Deserve, you that's deserve job. a performer's no... fee, but every other back end, everything else behind it, the engine that is actually propelling you forward, right. needs to uh, be compensated the exact same way amount. Right. You know what you should take. Finish that. Your thought. Should that be a form of mechanical royalties, like another form of mechanical? I think there since, is. So since... that's that's one thing that they were saying is that there there actually is a mechanical royalty, but it's. It's really low. It, I, 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 I don't. I don't even know. Oh. I can't. I'm not an expert in it. Is that because I would? Because like I've that's, that's seen a part of before. I've seen it. I've seen it before, oh. and they were saying that's that's something they're trying to get standardized for show. Mm. Like producers getting paid, but mm. actually, I think they should because now that I'm thinking about it, like most people, like back in the day, you had to bring a band to bring your sounds. So now, now you just bring paid. speakers in the MP3s. Now that I'm thinking about it, that do make sense. Damn. <laughs> that do make sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that does make sense to, yeah. to try. Because like, like, you literally had to bring a band and pay the band. If you right. doesn't pay the band, you wasn't going to have no Facts. music. So like, mm. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So now the DJ's you can get in the bag. <laughs> now right. he, he even make the song. <laughs> right. Right. Damn. <laughs> Oh that's the that's damn. crazy. Sick. I didn't even the think the DJ's getting the bag. Yeah, before the, the DJ's producer. getting the bag, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. he's just playing the song. He's just damn, playing the bitches damn. back to back. And like now, <laughs> you who actually made the sounds that people are listening to and singing along to, you're kind of just like that. That is true. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Bro just actually now. Now that I'm thinking about that, here, like, I think that should be a thing. That should yeah, be at least thing. something, right? It should yeah, be, it should be negotiated. Whatever it is, some kind of think about how filthy it gets. Literally. Let me ask you this. Were you taking advantage of the opportunities? Not not taking advantage, like capitalizing on, on the opportunities. Like when you were you're around, like you're on Thug Tour and stuff like that. You you have access to these artists, plenty of access to these artists, plenty of access. You know what I'm saying? Are you were you capitalizing on that? I don't know, bro. I was, I'm pretty. I was pretty reclusive. I'm pretty still. I'm still pretty reclusive. So like, the crazy thing. That's why like just now, like maybe like recently, I produced like a song for 10K on on the beginning of his uh the first song on one of his projects. And then like, but I've always only produced for Yachty mm. before. So I don't even, yeah, I did, would, would I consider that, did I capitalize off of it? No, not really. Mm. No, I'm thinking about, should I have? I don't know. Maybe, probably. Hmm. But am I dumb for not? I don't think so. Mm. Um, <clears throat> also, do I think other people who, should, who go on tour and get like things like that? Yes, they should for a fact capitalize off yeah, of it right, and right. try to, yes. I think your guys' situation was unique because you guys had that sound together. Mm. And also, with, mm. there was a point in time where Yachty kind of wasn't getting the respect um, amongst uh, the other artists. What do you mean? Like, like the when? same way he does now. Because, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it was. But I know in, like, you know how old heads when Yachty came out, like, oh, that's Give me, like, an example. That's bullshit. Like, what like, year and what? what, what we're talking mean? about 2016. 2016. Oh, yeah, you mean, man, like, he, he didn't get respect from, like, older people? Yeah. yeah. Man, everybody. Um, I ain't never but seen But that was dog, everybody. Nobody. nobody was getting respect from all of Yeah, but like, Yachty got what? it bad. Like, yeah. Like, Joe Budden. Jo <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That whole I like vibe. Joe Budden. Man, that was rough. <laughs> like, even everything everybody was saying. I think he was just so... 
I think different that's, that it's just like, whoa. Yeah, I think I think with that, I think it was just a disconnect with older people and their ideals and then our our ideals as younger people. I think that's specifically what that was. Cause like and because like I guess I don't know. People always come up to me and be like, You like made the sound. I don't know if it's the sound that I made. Like, cause I, I would say like I made like beats and yeah, I did make sounds, but was it a specific sound that I tapped into? Would you guys consider that? Like, Hell yeah, I mean, you, huh? Listen to you say it. Like that, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, because, like, people always be like, like, someone come up to me and be like, you made Bubblegum Trap? I'd be like, bro, I didn't even want to call it. They're like, I don't even know what the what you would consider. Yeah, but if you, go, if that Yachty sound was made in part by you, yeah. and there was plenty of people to come afterwards that mm, were that did kind really of like, influenced okay, by yeah. it. So, I do agree. I'm not saying you were the sole reason, but you were... Kind of made Part that cool. That you made that cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Hmm. Enough to get the attention of older people to be to hate. Yeah. So obviously, had they have to point their finger to something. That's and true. Had made something. That's true. Some people did at me. Like I remember, it was like I forgot that year. So many people added me on Twitter. Like, bro, you make fucking beats. Like, fucking, they're trash. They sound like. It's like some old video game. <laughs> well, I was like, I didn't, bro. The crazy part, I never played no old video games, so that's great. When people used to be yeah, like no that, access. I was like, bro, I don't know what the fuck they sounded like. So mm, I don't know yeah. what you mean by like my beats sound like old this or this or that. Like I don't know. Like I was just mm. doing what I was feeling. Like, like I said. So, hmm. As a as a producer making a sound. Okay, what's a producer who recently you would say like more recently created a sound? Create it or, or or like somehow like tapped in. I said that Tay Keith really Tay Keith. using that Memphis South yeah, sound. Yeah, I feel like really that bounce. That, that, yeah, yeah like that's, that shit is yeah, fire. That's fire. That's fire. It is fire. Tay Keith fire as hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shout out Tay Keith. Oh God. Uh, um, Jetson. Jetson. I feel oh, like yeah. he he's giving that bot that bot with the eight oh eights. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But do you think in the future they'll they'll receive credit as like. Do you think people would be like, okay, yeah, he pioneered this sound or made this sound? I've never heard any. I've never heard anybody else use that, make that sound before. But that Jetson, never. It would, never heard it. Mm. Mm. I'm not even gonna lie. I've, I've heard. I've heard a lot of people use those types of 808s around this, around the time that the 2016 time. You know, what you know that's but, so weird that y'all specifies like the 808. Like y'all, y'all have like an uh, and uh, like a specific like uh, instrument. That is what you connect to someone's sound like. It's an instrument and also a rhythm. It's and, a yeah, and a it's rhythm. a cadence, a it's bounce. a pattern. Yeah. yeah cause, okay. Cause some people, some producers. Okay, so then for me, what is that like for my beats? Like when you like, I guess whoever listened, if y'all did. Okay. It's me, more of a feeling. Like yeah, it's, I would it's say a, it's like a major like like you happy, like we kinda. thought it was major scale, but it's it's not a major. That's what it feels like. That's crazy because I like like my favorite like types of sounds and stuff are like from like movies. Like I like like Interstellar sound score, Man of Steel. Mm. Um, uh, Inception or there was just one movie that was on Netflix it was about the girl that went into like the crystal like little little dome and then her husband had died on the inside hell no and but mm. like had came back to life as an alien and came back yo that's yo but the sounds in that is crazy mm. crazy but um yeah which is crazy you say that I, I always did like like movie scores like grand mm. scores more mm. Mm. what were you saying JB you said you were about to say something it was you about to we was talking about right before I said a happy major scale. Mm, yeah, you was. You was like you asked him because I was asking you about specific sounds. Like you have an idea, like uh, of what a producer sound is. Like mm -hmm. it's a specific instrument in bounce rhythm, or is it a feeling? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I was just saying it? like yeah, like what we look, what we looking for is like the moods. You know what I'm saying? The moods that you give. It's like. You're doing it on purpose when you make the beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's how you that's how you do it, just because that's how you feel. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So every producer, that's what they not mm -hmm. every producer, because a lot of producers, honestly, like I said, they make beats according to I wanna make beats like this artist. Yeah, that's you know crazy. And and there's yeah, some crazy. producers who who have came out with the artists and they make a sound because that's how that's the relationship between them and the artist, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's what they like doing. And that's that's just what's hot. Uh -huh. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So many formulas, so many like uh, ways to do everything now. I don't even think like you need to like specifically like do like I don't think you need to g do anything specific. Like I don't even think producers should even th like a producer should just be worried about producing. Like I feel like 
it's fucked up that like certain producers, yeah, do have to like put it on the side because like they have life to worry about and things. But how can you you can't go against that though? You can't. Yeah, that's true. What you mean? Some people can. Like how what you, you just mean, say, can't go against what life life like like life life beating yeah. you up like you can't. You gotta pay rent, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta hustle, you know what I'm saying? So, so you, do you think producers should get a job or do you think they should just be like you and just thug it out the car and just cook up? Like mm. I mean honestly. Got, but what if you got a family? I mean okay. Oh situation. yeah, you know it's different. Because for me, like I I don't like it's just it's literally just me. So yeah. like i I also feel like that's also like another blessing and also another like um is it a, not a curse, but like a like challenge. Challenge, challenge? because like I don't have any family. So uh-huh. if I fail in anything, it's just me. Like <laughs> right. if I fail at anything, I, I, when nobody else is like, I have nowhere else to fall back to. I have no one to fall back on. I have nowhere to go. So at the end of the day, like if I fail, it's on me. If right. I do any, if I fuck up, it's on me. So like, I also feel like that's, a, oh, that's also like another, like, I guess like factor that like, I don't have to worry about. Cause like people do have family that they have to worry and care about. Like, yeah. you do have, That's like... your responsibility. Yeah, you want to get your mom, like, out of wherever it is or, like, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, you want to go get, like, you want to have your family go to a better area. For me, it's, my, like, my friends and, like, maybe my, I have a little brother that, like, I want to, like... You know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't have, like, an immediate, like... Like, I never had, like, a support group as a family. Like, or, like, a... Mm. Or, like, I never had, like, any kind of... I guess that's where, like, me, like, always, like deep diving into myself or like ideas or ideas of other people like I guess that's where it comes from but like I never really have anything to fall back on so for me it's do all or do not mm. right so mm. if you don't I, do you don't eat yeah you don't do you don't eat like you know what I'm saying so like that's always like my like defining factor of like me being myself mm. I guess what what does a day in in, uh, in your life look like right now mm. Well, it's crazy because tomorrow I'm actually leaving. Well, I'll, I'll actually be leaving at like 4 a.m. I'm going to go to the airport and then go to L.A. Because I just dropped this project. I'm going to go to L.A. I got some other stuff that I got to work on. And then um, I think uh, I'm going to go out there and talk with um, some, um, what do you call those companies? Like those touring companies like AG, Live Nation, whatnot. And yeah. I'm booking agencies? Yeah, booking agencies. I'm going to route uh, like a tour because I just dropped the project. So, yeah. So that's what it is. Like. And the crazy thing is most of that work is personal work. Like, I'll be like, so most of my life is spent on, like, computers. Mm. So, like, I'll be like, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to, like, oh, damn. I feel like, like, making, like, something might catch me. Like, I'll, like, I have, like, hello. Everybody has, like, recordings of, like, themselves recording themselves, like, melodies or whatever. Mm. Like, so I'll always be like, sometimes I'll be like, okay, I need to do this. And I write down, I write down a lot. I write down a shit ton. I feel like you should write down almost every Thanks. random thought you think of. <laughs> like, nice. So, uh, yeah, I write down a lot. And uh, it's crazy because some moments in time, like I'll live life out of a backpack and a suitcase and then I'll come back home. But those are the best times. Because I feel like when I come out and interact with people, this that's like my reality. But when I go back home, that's like my escape or that's my, that's my like, that's my universe. Not not even to like it's it's like a bubble. I feel like when I'm here, it's real. But when I'm back home, I like I'm not like it's not real. Like I just like like that's just me. Like it's it's so hard to explain. Like it almost feels like um dream like. I don't know. Mm. But yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Though. Yeah, I feel like most people do feel it. I know it's like it's like um It's like, like another like, one of those in like between feelings. Like, it's like another one of those in between thoughts, Ooh. feelings, or whatever. This yeah. is probably the most philosophical. Like, it's actually very deep. That's <laughs> not because it's, no, it's like, like, my bad. No, no, <laughs> Am I, I taking it. out too? Because it. it's like when you're out and you're interacting with people and you're working and shit, you don't really have time to like think about all the shit mm-hmm. like you can think about like when mm-hmm. you're at home, like all right. the, like damn, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Yeah, because that's also another thing. Like you have to focus. That is something you right. should, like you need to like learn to do. You need to learn to focus in on those things because with many, too many desires leads to many stri- struggles. Many desires leads to many struggles. Uh, that's deep. Once Damn. you once you narrow it down, Damn. you pinpoint it. 
You fucking like you work on that. Like you don't have anything to I was to worry about. Like, you got punched in the forehead. Like, <laughs> too many de- desires leads to too many struggles. I forgot Confucius said that. Confucius, mm. yeah, but yeah. Okay, take that one. Shout out to Confucius. <laughs> yeah, Confucius. Shout out to Confucius. Long yeah, take that one. So let's talk about this new project, man. Mm, okay. This this is not your first project as an artist. No, that's crazy. Nah, but this is. Burberry. The, other than the project that Burberry took down. <laughs> this is crazy. But yeah, this is not the first project. But I guess some people would say it is kind of like my new first little project because like Burberry took down the other one. I did have like a little EP called Bedtime Stories, but I feel like every time I get to a mic, like I've always wanted to be an artist because like I always feel like um, those are like timestamps of you or like those are like not even timestamps of you. Those are timestamps of what you and what you're like you making the best sense of what you're feeling and what everybody else is feeling because everybody else is feeling the same shit at the same time so every time i get to a mic i articulate it better like my ideas come out way better and you're like what the fuck like you learn like you're like i'm getting good good as fuck at this shit so like i've always wanted to be an artist in that sense and then yeah this new project see you there ah how do I come behind my my like uh, my idea of it? Okay, so back to what I was saying on a philosophy thing. The reason it's called so, uh, See You There is because I believe that life teaches everybody the same lessons, but at different times. Mm-hmm. So in the end, I'll always see you. So I'll see you there, like like at the finish a, line. A year at whatever finish line you draw for yourself, because in the like people don't understand the like we're we're all growing, we're all becoming better people, like. And, hopefully and hopefully mm-hmm. and you and you kind of live in the moment and forget about it a little bit but like my my end vision is like i'd like to see like everybody there in the end like so i guess i'll see you there like if you want to be right but i guess i will you know so that's how i came up with it mm-hmm. and plus like uh ever since i was younger people always called me like uh Perry the Platypus, and you know, like in the show, like people are like, "Where's Perry?" Yeah. <laughs> not. So, like, my website man. is Perry is here. So, like, mm. I have Perry is here. My SoundCloud oh, is okay. Perry is here, and like whatnot. So, like, mm. see you there. Mm. How long did the How long did it take for the project to come about? Mm, that's crazy because that project was actually a couple projects, a couple different projects, and then it's crazy because like as you go along, like the songs go away, you add more songs, but then I realized that you need to you need to find the balance of when to put it out as well. Like, it's, because it's, like, that's so hard. It's always going to be changed because even when I listen to the songs now, I'm like, damn, these songs are not done to me. But, like, people be like, yo, bro, this shit is so, I'll be like, bro, I can't listen back to them because, like, I'm going to be mad. Like, mm. <laughs> I need to hear, like, like, I need to finish it. I'm like, no, I can't finish it now. It's already out. So, like, that's why, like, I don't listen to music. It never sounds finished. Nothing ever sounds finished. I feel that. I think a lot mm. of producers, be, that's why a lot of producers overproduce too. Yeah. Add too I much also, to it. Oh boy, I had a problem with that at first. I had a crazy problem with that at first. Talk about it. Overproducing. Everybody's just like, Perry, why the fuck you got so many sounds in your shit? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> y'all don't hear this. It's not fire to y'all. They're like, it's too many sounds. Like, how yes. am I supposed to get on this? I'm like, who said you were trying to get on? You don't hear this? Like, do you not hear this? <laughs> do you not hear this? So, I don't know. Like, I guess I always had a problem with it. But then I learned to like, simplify not simplify I learned to I learned to not even care now that I'm there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I learned to not even care like I don't even care at this point what you think about what I'm doing at any point what you think about anything that I sound like like if it's giving me them goosebump feelings and like that that drug is hitting mm. I don't even care mm. <laughs> we gotta either move to the next wait till I'm done with this beat and then move to the next beat and then you can hear it like you gotta wait for me to loop this a couple times I ain't done with mm. it <laughs> so I don't I even that. so are these songs that you you are like you're following you're, you're practicing what you're preaching you, you're making it from your heart versus yeah. trying to make stuff that you think society wants mm-hmm. yes 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 but the problem the not the problem but the other thing is you're also using tools that other people have used. So like with beat kit, uh, um, drum kits, whatever sounds like you're not using completely new sounds, but like you're finding new light and new ways to use them. So mm-hmm. like, it's kind of fire. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it all self-produced? You got other producers involved? Uh, I have one other producer involved on C there. Um, his name is Jubilee. Fucking, a Juve is fire as hell. But um, why does it, you looked over like it sounded familiar. 
I just read that word somewhere. Uh, hmm. yeah, it is. And it's a good <laughs> it what means it's a good meaning yeah. word. It means it means something good. Yes. So yeah. it, That's what I remember. It's like a sense <laughs> of happiness, I think it, it means. Mm. You can go ahead. I'm okay. gonna <laughs> fact but check. I like, read it in the Bible. It's like, nah, probably. Mm. Maybe. I think it is a name in the Bible or yeah, something. I think it's something it is. like that. But um, yeah, one other producer I worked with on on most of these tracks on this one is uh, his name is Jubilee. It was just me and him, and it's crazy because like people be like, "Oh, yo, yo, this shit sounds crazy." Fly, you know, I, I did it at the crib. Like, right. <laughs> you know, what are y'all talking? Like, I didn't do this in the studio. I did one song in the studio in L.A., and that was the one with Nakel. And uh, but yeah, uh, Jube, fi ass producer. I think uh, I gravitate to Jew because he like um, he makes like uh, those grand scale like a uh, type like um, like it, it sounds super movie esque or like cinematic cinematic I guess mm. you would say and um, orchestra it doesn't even have much orchestra orchestration on it which is crazy I don't think um, I feel like orchestration is something that's like people like uh, <laughs> use it as the go to they're like oh you want to make something grand go to the orchestra I'm like yeah. But there's also other ways of doing that too. Like, there's also like an interstellar. Like, they're using yeah. a lot of pads. Yeah, interstellar is beautiful. Oh, hey, bro. Yeah. Hey, that song. Whoever, yo, I it's, need to uh, find out. Hans Zimmer. Oh, Hans. I think, yeah, it is. I think he's that's right. That, that is it. That Hans Zimmer. It. That's it. That's, he's a goat. That's literally yeah. He did. He did Man of Steel too. He did. He, he did Man of Steel. He's like too fire. Everything. Too fire. Has um being an artist been more financially lucrative than being a producer outside of the major hit? Not yet. Oh, outside of the major hit? Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. It's like, I produced most of Yachty's first two projects. Oh, not his first two projects, but the the two pro Like, I did, I did like, I forgot whether well, it was six or seven beats on the first Little Boat and it was completely myself. And then I did like six or seven beats on the second project that he did completely myself. And l- thank to God, every, like people still listen to it. So mm. it still generates mm. a lot. So it's not just the hit that like, right. what's it called? But do I make I make way more money off producing than I do off artistry mm-hmm. right right now? But could you see how artistry is there like something that you see like artist could has a potential to make a way a lot more more efficiently? I guess. Like, uh because I hear I hear Sonny talk about I made way more money off of being an artist than I ever did being ooh, a producer. Damn, that's crazy for Sonny. Damn, huh? Mm. Hmm. But he also had some deal situations that were different. Mm, so. Yeah, I've never had a deal as an artist. I got a distribution deal recently as an artist, but I've never had like um like a, a label deal or anything like large. Nobody's well, other than like a while ago. But I decided not to because I felt like I was dumb. I was too dumb. Like I didn't want to like. I always feel like in a contract, someone's losing. Mm. That's why the contract's in front of you. Like someone's going to lose. Like someone's getting fucked. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, let me not, like, I feel like you got to be very careful when someone lays a piece of paper in front of you. Like, mm. so, like, in every contract, you are most likely going to be the one losing it. <laughs> I'm going to let you know that right now. You are, like, in some sense, because not only do they have to uh, 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 assume that they're going to make money off you, they're going to find a way to get the insurance off you, too. Like, that, they have some sort of assurance to make sure they make money off you. So, Mm. That's true. I didn't like, sign uh, a major label contract like back then, or maybe two or a year or two ago. Yeah, I chose not to because I felt like I always learn every day going through music. Like, why not keep learning and like just kind of keep figuring it out? Because like when you do a label contract, well, me being firsthand, like, because I, fortunately I didn't have to sign a label contract, but with Yachty, like me just watching that unfold and seeing how people like all the people in the label and seeing how all that thing, fortunately, like I got like a firsthand look of like how it all goes down. And you're like, oh, okay. Okay. This shit kind of ass, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I, that's what really was like, I was like, let me just keep going this way. Like the more independent route. Well, it's completely independent route than that way. Because I've never, I've never been like, I don't like, I got time. I got money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't have to <laughs> do that. You know what I'm saying? Most, some people, they want to be like, what is like my quickest way to start them? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, it's like, what is my best idea of myself at that point? Like, right. like I'm trying to make that picture come to life. I don't care. I don't mm-hmm. care how, I don't care how you think I need to come to that picture or what makes you think 
that that what whatever you think will make me come to that picture because I'm the one who's in the picture. I'm the one who's going to choose how I get there. You know, like the the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That sounds so familiar. I like think the, I mean, at the bottom level, it's like you need food, water, whatever. Uh, then once those are taken care of, you elevate and elevate. Yes. At the pinnacle is self-esteem. So like once all your basic needs are met and everything in between the top one is self-esteem and like what it seems like now is you have the base level covered. All your basic needs are covered. So now you're able to start diving into the sure. more like what is it yeah, that I'm introspectively? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But I think most level. people are just trying to get those basic needs right, covered. Right, that bottom yeah. cover. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I that's agree. what tying back, that's when I was talking about like developing a business that's need-based, like taxes, mm-hmm. toilet paper, whatever. So you have something that will always cover those basic mm-hmm. needs. Real estate. So you can focus on So you on can start that. diving into those yeah. introspective mm-hmm. internal right. goals. Get, get your freedom. Yeah. That, that is mean, the best yeah. way to figure out about yourself. But I also feel like struggle is Wait, what is? Um, um, like um, going and and figuring out your ba- your basic needs, but I also can say like uh, I mean like having your basic needs covered mm-hmm. and then working uh, work like thinking about yourself. Mm-hmm. But I also think that like that's not always the case. That's why I always say like everything in this world is almost based on what your what your quilt of ideals, perception, and reality is. Like whatever you think it is to you, mm-hmm. like because I I meet people all the time. Who like, who have like ideas and of things that like you like really? I thought she was like, how do I explain? Broke. Just, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 just broke. Um, like people signed to people, people doing big things, but with dumb ideas. You ever you ever, like people doing big, big things? things people, with dumb people, ideas. people, Give us a- people in great okay. positions. But with dumb ideas, you ever like, oh, oh like, yeah, like, like you, you meet them, like, damn, bro, I thought you would have had it all figured out. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, yeah. and you assume that because of the, like, you know what I'm saying, like, you have the base needs figured out. Right. Why the fuck don't you got a thing figured out? Everything else figured out. But like, you can't say, like, I can't say that's something that's for everyone. I feel like this, like, life in general. Yeah. Like, you just kind of find a way, and hopefully, fortunately, you become, like. Hopefully you become fortunate enough to to come to that point before that. Cause I feel like there's a couple things that brings you to that point of self-thinking and introspectively like realizing a lot of things about yourself and the people around you and how much like everything influences you. Right. I mm. I think struggle also brings you to that too. That's why I was bringing up struggle. I think struggle is one of the best teachers because you learn I never want to struggle like that again. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so yeah. like, and you don't even have to struggle like that physically. You can struggle like that mentally as well. Mm. Emotionally. Yes. And, but that, the problem is with, for some reason, emotionally and mentally, people seem to want to like, they take it more, I guess, or they like, they like, skip over it. Skip over it. Or like, that's why, that's a, like another form of self-destruction I feel like people do is like, like even I'm just gonna use an ex- example like toxic relationships or something like that, like uh, like you feel like like that's that's another thing where like your mentality and then your emotions and all your feelings like that it, it all comes together and you like, and you're for some reason, you know it's bad but you're willing to keep doing it. Why? Mm. And you don't know why. You know what I mean? Right. So like I don't know, I don't know if just having your base needs taken care of and like whatnot, it really helps you. Mm. It's just like, just work on yourself as a person day by day, I guess. Discipline? I don't know. Because even, I feel you because like having your basic needs covered and having money doesn't necessarily mean you're happy. Yeah. There's people like, like there's people, Gary Vee says this shit all the time, like there's people that make millions that are nowhere near as happy as someone that might make 20 bands a year, 15 bands a year. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like in other countries, they flip the the hierarchy like upside down. Like they're able to have like the in the introspective things like happiness, joy. Mm. Those things are like from within. Yeah, yeah. Versus and but then you look at their situation like, yo, y'all living in this. Like, how do y'all have that? <laughs> they don't need and I think, that. I think a lot. Yeah, that's a good point because I think a lot of us think our basic needs are so much greater than what they actually are. Yeah. But a culture makes it makes us feel like that. Right. Yeah, culture we're in the we're in the land of capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're not. In, <laughs> yeah, that's right. literally what it like, is. Bro, I can't meditate until I got a Because even when until I got a lamb, right, right, right. Because even when even when people like 
even when co- people complain, like, my parents are from Haiti. So, like, mm-hmm. I've, been, like, I've been to Haiti a bunch of times. I've been, like, well, I've been, like, all over the world. But, like, when you go to places and you see people struggle but still, like, seem to find a way to smile, mm-hmm. like, you'd be like, what the fuck are you complaining about, bro? <laughs> right. yeah. What are you, co- what is it that you're complaining about? Right. Like, what is wrong? What's the matter with you? Like, you're complaining about this, that, like, bro, roll with the punches. Keep yeah. going. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, whatever mm-hmm. it is you got going on. Like, I swear to God, it's not as bad <laughs> as yeah. it is. Because there's places in the world where it's like, it, it, the way it's set up, if you if you're, if you you are from a certain area, mm-hmm. you're never going to be rich in that area. You're yeah. never going to do this. You might mm-hmm. as well be happy. You might as well find something that's going to make you happy. Here's All the right. thing. Is in America, I feel like people be, be here, they'd be like, in the hood, like, I feel like they they make, like, yeah, they make certain places, like, for you not to win. Like, you are coming, you come out of places, like, and it's like almost purposely like they make it for you not to win. But when you go to other countries and you see the places they make it for them not to win, right. you feel like, hold on. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. Hold on. Yeah. What are we complaining Isn't about? Isn't it like something like if you live in the United States, you're in the top 1% of the Yeah, entire yeah world. you are. Yeah, yeah. Literally, no matter like, how poor you are in the United States or something like, like that. Like there's, really, there's really people living off like a dollar a week. Bro. Like a yeah. dollar a day, like that type of stuff. Yo, they gotta go dig around. a hole to take a shit. People right, think yeah. the United States is hell. It's not. It's right. not. We fucking but, around, fucking around Uber Eats. Right, right. right. <laughs> I know. I mean, because this place, I'll be mad at like whatever it is. I'm mad at, and then I just be like, bro, it's a privilege to even be mad at that. Yeah. Like, it's a privilege yes, to even be mad that I forgot to charge my phone this morning. Like, man, man, it's like, man, life sucks. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm, let me go. I'm, life sucks. Let phone. me go. <laughs> I'm hungry, man. Let me, let me get some shit going. Literally. Right. Literally. <laughs> So, but that's another part of like, I feel like you should catch your thoughts in those moments as well. Cause that shows right. you like, damn, I really should not be mad or even yeah. like, that's like why. That third, that yeah. third eye view. That third, yeah. the um, mm. third person view. Mm-hmm. Cause that's how I always right. catch myself. I'm like, bro, like, what am I even like, what am I even angry about? Like, bro, it's kids over here. Like whatever life throws at me, like, I feel like I can get through it. Like at that point, like, right. you know what I'm saying? Cause like people have life thrown at them way harder. So, yeah. We need the the good Perry motivational speaking show, <laughs> <laughs> right? You Charlie Rocket man, <laughs> 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 that would be fine, huh? Maybe the mm-hmm. good Perry podcast. You can get you a podcast too. <laughs> mm, maybe I always wanted to be a bro. I'd be watching podcasts like shit, bro. I'm not even gonna cap. I'd be watching this one, the Joe Rogan, oh, the Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan podcast too far. Um. That's how you know about Eddie Bravo. Yeah. That's how well, you know yeah, but like I already was into like I already was into MMA since like bro, Donald Cerrone's my favorite MMA like fighter of all, all time. Right. All right, you know I'm about to test. <laughs> when, when, when did you get into MMA? Like, um, maybe ah, uh, maybe about two years ago or a year oh, ago. Oh, okay, two years okay. Ago. So you knew to this? Yeah, I'm okay, like relatively new. No, but like. Donald I'm still kind of like that's a hey he's movie. like my Obi-Wan Kenobi because like my favorite Star Wars character is like Obi-Wan mm-hmm. I don't know why I just do but like he's like my Obi-Wan like he's like dumb huh he's like kind of like off the wall he's like this man's riding bulls right before he's about he's to go, on to go fight. fight this dude bro damn yeah riding a bull bro have you ever heard of like deep Putting cave his life diving on the line and shit. deep sea like that's cave diving that's deadly one of the deadliest deadly sports in the United States in the world is deep like cave, cave diving, diving. he's like like complete darkness you're just in a cave in a in a suit with your air you could get lost in it it's underwater it's underwater, it's underwater. you're cave. underwater you could get lost if someone panics and the dust goes everywhere you're done it's over you're done there's just your a life, little rope bro, your life is on a rope <laughs> like a shoestring <laughs> like, that's the only way you crazy. can get back so like it, I don't know uh, Donald Strong fire as hell regardless but Oh, wait, back on the producer tip. I forgot what right, he was right. talking about. Okay. I got hyped cool. MMA, I get too hyped. I'm like, too it's hyped. cool. It's why, but MMA definitely is why. I feel like fighting, well, in most, in most places where you're fi- finding out to hone your skill, whether it be producing, fighting, um, any kind of like long term discipline like thing, I feel like, like we all like develop similar mindsets just in different, different ways, like mm. being a producer. And that's like, like, that's also how you could find a way to, like, dive into it. Because, like, even while I've been making music, I've, like, I've done drop shipping websites. Like, I've done, like, all kinds of stuff. Like, or, uh, so, so do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, just to test, like, be like, bro, am I, like, even smart enough to do this? Because sometimes I'll be at home and be like, am I dumb? I'll be like, I haven't been to school <laughs> like, 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 since forever. Am I stupid? Like, so I'll be like, okay, let me go try this. Like, I'll set a goal and be like, okay, let me go do this. And then, mm-hmm. like, once you go do it, you'll be like, oh, okay. 
it was hard, but like it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So sometimes I'll do stuff like that just to like push myself a little bit further. But yeah, I feel like diving into all worlds as a person helps you in whatever it is you're trying to figure out and what you want to do at the end of the day. So, man, we'll end it off, man, with uh, one of our favorite producer segments, pure producing type shit called Overrated, Underrated. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, they've been begging for us to bring this shit back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they've been texting JB and his new... <laughs> let, him, let, let him also know, too, uh, JB's got a, a phone number you can text him and interact with him. I have an exclusive group. It's Ooh. a keyword. You have to text Kit Plug. I have the, No spaces, right? Yeah, no, plug? no spaces. Kit Plug. I'll put the number in the description. So just text that number. Text Kit Plug to that number. You'll be locked in to the, to the group. You don't got the number to read it off right now? Mm. I bet. I don't mean to. <laughs> oh, the number is 844-391-2766. So. One more time. The number to join the group is 844-391-2766. So text K plug to that number. K- and you'll be automatically joined into the group. Does the K have to be? And he really texts you back. Yeah, I really text you. Oh, look, you. he's signing yeah. up right now. <laughs> but you already know I mean that bitch. <laughs> is it spaces or together no space it's kit plug and um oh yeah so uh, overrated underrated like I said they've been they've been in there telling them that we need to bring it back so we got we got three three little simple ones um and basically you just we're gonna ask you a question you just tell us if you think it's overrated or underrated and okay. uh if we wanna go more in depth we'll talk about a little more a little bit more about it first one is signing publishing deals ooh hmm that's crazy cause I actually <laughs> Is it overrated or underrated? You know, it's a, there's a down, there's an up and a down to everything. Cause like for me, like I did 50%, uh, a 50% publishing deal with um Rick Rubin. So like, I like, sometimes I'll look at the royalty checks. I'll be like, so they're literally getting half of what, <laughs> the, I'm, they're literally getting this number, mm-hmm. the exact same number. And like, they're literally taking half. So because like, they gave you an advance. Because they gave you an advance. I'll, I'll look at it. I'll be like, hmm, would I have been better off? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I do do that. Sorry, it's just, it's just, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Sorry. as long as you find a home, that that's the, another thing that's uh, important. <clears throat> Finding your home and actually like talking to like these people and understanding like being like, because people be like, oh damn, I went to this label and got shelled. What's it called? It's because you didn't want like, nine times out of 10, it's because you never made it a point for the people who are working with you to get to know you. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's why, like, how are they, like, like, you never went to, like, if this person is doing something for you, they much rather would want to do it more so if they knew you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Like, versus you, you just you versus grabbed the you check and you were off. So, like, sometimes, like, even, like, with me, like, with me, it's, like, uh, with Rick, it's through Pulse. So, uh, I, like, go up there, bro, like, I'll drop off, like, like stuff, like I'll go up there and just hang out, talk to the folks of it. Like, like I have a pretty good relationship with the people that are like in my publishing deal. So I would mm. say for me, it's like pretty fire. I also think that certain producers should not sign publishing deals early at all. Like mm. if they're if they're not giving you a ha, actually then then again, I feel like that all depends on the discipline of yourself and how you decide to take that money and dive it back into yourself. Like, if you think that's just, like, spending money, then, bro, you shouldn't even be in this business. I don't kind of clean. Like, if you think all of, like, if someone gives you an advance, you're like, that's all spending money for me, and I don't have to worry about, like, anything else because they're going to have the budget for me. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Like, like, always figure out a way for you to make, like, yourself better on top of them figuring out a way to make you better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, publishing deals, I don't know. Overrated, underrated, maybe... I'm like right in the middle with it. Maybe, no, 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 underrated, underrated. Yeah. Cause some people do it very, some people do it very well. Like, um, some people have very, uh, very good way. Like they've already had like the output. So they're just outputting, outputting, outputting. Right. So they never really. And for me, like with, uh, like me doing like that much work at the time. And that's what the, the publishing they signed me for. Like you, like, with stuff like that, you can recoup very quick. If you have that, if you have that ability, you can recoup and then you have a good relationship. I feel like then publishing deals are underrated at that point. Mm, but if you can recoup. Yeah, if mm. you can recoup and you have a nice relationship, it's all depending on what you got going on and what you who you want to be. What do you want to do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
with that. So yeah, I would say it's like a bit underrated because my publishing company is extremely good to me. Like I can't even complain to them in any in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Okay. If you could go back, would you sign it? Mm. Yeah, I would still sign it. I would still sign it. For real? Mm-hmm. Um, the other reason why is because, like, um, I get to talk to Rick Rude. <laughs> like, that's kind of cool. Like, when I talk to him, like, what, one of the first things that, like, really started to, like, flip, like, uh, my, my idea of thinking, like, my, my way of, like, uh, my way of thinking was, like, or one of the last, like, little knobs was, like, I learned that you go to these places expecting, I don't expect anything from anything. So you go to these ex- places expecting something, right? And so when it doesn't meet your expectations, it's autom- It's a letdown for you. So that's where you find a place to complain, right? So I don't go expecting anything. I already have like my idea of the work that I have to put in. You know what I'm saying? I don't have an idea of what someone else, who, what input someone else has to put in. It's like my artwork, I did it completely myself. Like all the beats, like, like literally it was just me and Ju- well for the most part it was me but it was me and jubilee like, but i could even say it was 50 50 or whatever but um yeah so like i never have an idea whatever someone else is bringing to the table is just what someone else is bringing to the table for me i don't have an expectation of it. so that's why in hindsight yeah i would still go back and sign it because like it's it's learning like you learning that like bro nobody's going to do shit for you like it's your point to do it it's your life like what what, what is it like if you get shelved or something or whatever, like you're going to have to figure out your way to get out of it. Your life hasn't nice. stopped. You know what nice. I'm saying? Like, so it's always your fault at the end of the day. Let me ask mm-hmm. you this. If you could go back and there was a opportunity to take a smaller advance to have a bigger percentage, mm-hmm. would you have done that? To have a bigger percentage. I don't know. Cause I felt like, uh, I don't know. I've never been, really been done with money. So <laughs> I've never really been dumb, so I can't say that, like, I don't, the the amount it was never really, really matters, because I'm still, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never really, like, people be like, oh, yeah, because they're not, the one thing that do be pissing me off is, like, hounding people for money that is, like, that is owed to you, but, like, I've never been dumb with money. I've always accounted for myself in the future, if you, if I guess you know what I mean. Yeah. So, would I do it for a smaller percent? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no yes uh, mm. mm-hmm. mm. overrated underrated I don't know if you've used it yet brand new Nexus 3 oh boy I don't even I don't even know Nexus do hit but I don't even know I don't bro all all VSCs are underrated not enough uh, well actually nah there's people who do sound engineering like people like who dive deep who dive deep into like spe- specifying I don't know if that's a word. They're, the sounds that they want to use, like, you know, like when you make a beat, like, or you might hear a sound and you're like, damn, I want to get as close specifically to that sound. Like, I mean, tweaking the knobs and you shit. You tweaking the knobs and whatnot. Yeah. But like, even you, like, sometimes you just give up and you're like, uh, I can't even get that close. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. like if you keep going that down that road, like, you learn that, like, uh, all, all of them are kind of the same tool. It's just how you use it. Yeah. 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 I feel yeah. that. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Right, definitely. So, would you say you said under? You said underrated. Yeah, right. yeah. All all VSCs are underrated. Mm. They they underrate like all yeah, VSCs are them. underrated. You just got to know. You just got to bring your idea across. Yeah. Overrated, underrated. Coming up with a rapper. Overrated or underrated? Hmm. I don't even know how. Because I don't have nothing to compare that to. I didn't come up without a rapper, so I don't know <laughs> how how to be like whether that's overrated or underrated. Is it? Hmm. Right. I feel like maybe it is good because like then like you can like really hone in. I, I feel like multiple uh brains, um, multiple people working towards one idea is always better than just one. So that always helps. But I feel like once you get to like three or four, then it gets a little bit iffy. But like two, three is just the perfect line of like how many ideas to collaborate to bring an idea to life. Mm. I I guess. But working with a rapper, coming up with a rapper, overrated or underrated? I uh I don't I don't know if it's overrated. Do you okay, and you guys assumptions, would you guys assume on the outside looking in, is it overrated? I would say. Mm-hmm. I would, would you feel? I, okay, so I guess I'll answer the question with a question. Ooh. 
This man <laughs> <laughs> I guess the reason that we asked it is, has there been challenges? But then again, you haven't really gone out there and tried to get places with the whole industry. You, mm-hmm. you because like, I literally went producer and then like, now I'm like my own producing yeah, rapper. Yeah. And then that makes money too. So like, I don't never really like, my point is like, I, I kind of don't like people. Like, I don't like, I don't like, well, not that I don't like people. I don't yeah, like. I would disagree with that. You seem like a very. No, 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 no. I, I seem like, I am like a very, what's this called? But I don't like, um, I don't like, I don't know. Like, there's also, there's always, like, this, this, like, uh, I feel like maybe everybody has it, but, like, this overlaying, like, feeling of anxiety, like, of, uh... Social anxiety? Is it social anxiety? Because the crazy thing is I had something that fucked me up. I, I saw something on Twitter that said social anxiety is just another form of narcissism. I was like, oh, shit. That shit is crazy. No, <laughs> what, you think mm. about? what is narcissism? I don't, I don't know. know. Narcissism is, is, like, a, a form of, like, you thinking of yourself above other people. Oh, shit. And social anxiety <laughs> is another form of narcissism. Damn. That's crazy. I'm socially (laughs) anxious. Like, why why do you think you're socially anxious? So that shit was crazy to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I don't know. Like, uh, like I genuinely try and I I always see the good in people. So, but what's the question you were going to ask? Yeah, it was being put in that box is, oh yeah, that's Yachty's producer. Oh yeah, that's Yachty's producer. Hmm. Mm. Versus you as a producer. I have heard that before, so I'm not going to say I have it. So, in that case, I can't, the The thing is, like, I can't even say no because it's like, yeah, that's the only person I really produce for. So, like, is someone coming to me and be like, yo, that's Yachty's Redone? I'm like, yeah. Oh, like, I did produce all those songs. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So, I can't, but I do see, as like some people, I forgot who it was. I was talking, I don't want to say anything specific, but someone has told me something similar to that. Like they they kind of like uh, think it's overrated. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just a specific case, case to case, case mm. to case. And that's so ass because I haven't really answered none of these. <laughs> overrated or underrated. That's so terrible. But <laughs> case to case, I feel like this, for me, I feel like I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine with it. I don't really, I don't really care about anybody's idea of me. I, I always I always know that like I'm gonna get my idea out in the end. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. So case to case. Do you see those last two I added? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say see somebody what, slid something in here. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the last one first because the, the other one's kind of funny. All right, all right, living in Atlanta. Living in Atlanta, overrated, underrated. Boy, what? <laughs> <laughs> living in Atlanta. Is wild. Hey, hey. Being in Atlanta is so fine. And mostly, here's the thing. People, I don't know how people in Atlanta be hating on Atlanta. I'll be like, bro, y'all is <laughs> tripping. We, we literally live in like the best spot to be living in. And for you to already know that and have the space to maneuver around here, bro, there's nothing but studios on every corner. On every corner, there's nothing but studios. There's nothing but work for you to do. Mm-hmm. And whatever it is you want to love. I mean, in whatever it is you love to do. So I can't, I, I can't, living in Atlanta is underrated for a fact. Mm-hmm. For a fact. People in Atlanta be be tripping. I don't know what y'all talking about, bro. Atlanta cool. As long as you cool to other people, as long as you're good to other people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, just don't have no problems with nobody. All right. That's yeah. it. And it's super affordable. Yeah. yeah. Just don't have no problems. Like, literally, that's it. I don't know why people got problems with other folks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then last one, you might not, you might not legally be able to answer this, but... <laughs> 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 you know it's crazy. Hey, you know it's crazy. I'm gonna say it's underrated because hopefully one day in the in the one day in the future, it'll be like reach out and be like, okay, we see what you did there. Right. You know what? He's extended. We're gonna see you on the poster. I'm, I'm right. the poster at Fitz or some shit. Right. Like, you seen yeah. the one? You seen uh, Gucci? Gucci man, he's got a big ass poster in, in Fitz right outside the Gucci, Gucci store. One? He's in like a bubble bath. Big ass Gucci. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know what's crazy? That, that, actually, let me not even talk about it. Cause I was like, once, ah, let me not even talk about it. Cause they were, they, I'm not gonna cap. Like when, when, nah, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Let's just get it. For, for the lawyers watching, man. Yeah. If you, no, you want to put, the, the, put the bag behind him and you get a cut of the short <laughs> Oh God. Yo, D Pascal. I know. I know you're going to be watching this. I'm just letting you know. I love y'all. Low key. Still, still. I still love y'all, even though I didn't really wear it ever. That's that, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I never like really in most wore pictures, bait. I never. Yeah, seen I never. I never bait. wore. Yeah. I need more bait than anything. Yeah, I never really wore ever. The recent people started calling me Perry was because um, 
Um, my friend had a fake <laughs> scarf, and I put it around my head one day, and I rode around town, and then Nestle started calling me <laughs> Perry, and then everybody started calling me <laughs> Perry, and then I was like, I kind, I didn't even like the name at first. I was like, bro, can y'all stop calling me <laughs> Perry? And I was like, it just stuck. So I was like, okay. Yeah, from now on. Didn't you, know? you say at the beginning of the po- at the beginning of the podcast you shouldn't be saying? Yeah, I, think we I shouldn't. Drop we it. said. Right yo, we, we're gonna <laughs> put <laughs> the SpongeBob. We, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope they don't um, copyright claim. Or We've anything. been saying Blurberry every yeah. time. We'll just say Blurberry, Blurberry, Blueberry. Oh, Blueberries. trust me, I'll be safe. I'm very familiar with the YouTube copyright claim. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we but go. But hell yeah, man. Um, tell them the name of the project. They can go check it out. If they mm. don't follow you on Instagram, where can they go do that okay. too? The name of my uh, newest project is See You There. It's on Apple Music and Spotify. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's at the Good Perry, um, and it's the same Twitter. Um, uh, I feel like there's some. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. I think that's about it. That wraps it up. Yeah. Anything you want to get off your chest? Any last minute thoughts? Man? Anything I want to get off my chest? <laughs> Let me think. <clears throat> hey yo. All right, that's it. Oh man! I, thought you, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, oh, we, got, we got some, we got some, some dope coming. Oh, yeah, we got him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. We got him, guys. <laughs> All right, cool, man. A good Perry. Another Appreciate dope episode it. in the books, man. I think this is our longest episode too. Oh, that's far. Honestly, bro, I was and I came in. I was like, bro, I don't even know what we're gonna talk about. Like, I was like, I was like, cause I watched other interviews. I was like, bro, I don't even know. We're not gonna be talking about much. Be <laughs> I, swear. I'm just, I swear, so I was crazy. like, nah, bro, this ain't gonna be one of them ones that's gonna hit. Oh, but this man. one hit. Appreciate it. Yep. Andy from Rochester too, man. Yeah. Ugh, the Rochester. Rochester Shout is out producing to the Rock. some heat. <laughs> that's crazy. I would, I would consider myself from Atlanta, but I was born in Rochester. Well, Nyack. But I lived in Rochester. My like, it feels like every great has somehow come encounter, uh, come in contact with the Rochester. They know about it. <laughs> Shout out to the Rock, man. Oh God, another dope episode in the books, man. Hit that subscribe. Right, man. Peace, yeah. Yes, sir.